following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Chili still water. It is the Bedlam Series winner take all for the Big 12 title. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Walmart. Part of ESPN's rivalry series, presented by Jiffy Lou. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, ancient rivals in this series where the weird and the wacky seems to happen with regularity. Oklahoma made the jump from seven to three. Playoff rankings trying to join Clemson, Alabama, Iowa, and Michigan State, all who've already won this afternoon. Is a Sooner win enough to secure their bracket position in their finale? Welcome to Stillwater. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, Tom Rinaldi, and Heather Cox will join us on the sidelines. Part of this game is everything, bragging rights, Payback if you're Oklahoma. <laughs> Baker Mayfield trying to make a Heisman case. And, of course, the conference title and perhaps the playoffs as well. Incredible to think you're in one of the last weekends of the year and it all comes down to this. I mean, think about if you're Bob Stoops and you're looking at your team right now and you're talking to them. They're 60 minutes away from accomplishing nearly everything that they want to accomplish. A conference championship. And if everything goes well, securing a bid into the top four to have a shot at a national championship. And I think Mike Gundy as well. If you would have told Mike Gundy in August, you got a chance to host Bob Stoops and the Sooners in Bedlam to have a chance to win a Big 12 championship game. Forget about the top four. It's about winning a championship and Mike Gundy has his team ready to go. And for Soups, his fiery quarterback, Baker Mayfield, a chance to make his closing Heisman statement. And a guy who's got 33 touchdown passes, but got a scare. He got a cheap shot at TCU yeah. last week. Yeah, it was nasty. It looked very scary at the time. He was able to continue to play. They held him out in the second half against the Horn Frogs. The Horn Frogs almost came back to get them. He's had a great week of practice this week. He's been cleared. Uh, everything that we've heard from Bob Stoops on the field, even prior to the game, has said that they've not held him back at all. So unless he gets dinged again, and I, I don't think there's a concern for the Sooners. The thing that I really have been impressed by with, ba with Baker Mayfield has been, at times you'll see him work within the confines of the offense, where he's able to make reads and show accuracy, throwing the ball downfield to Sterling Shepard. And then there's other times where he's kind of like a Johnny Manziel, where he's buying time, he trusts and believes in his confidence in what he can do as a playmaker. Here he's waiting and waiting and over seven seconds for the defense to try to deal with him. And that's one thing that Glenn Spencer, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma State, says is we've got to be able to control him as, as much as we can and not let him escape and make plays. And I think Samaj P. Ryan, as much as we talk about Baker Mayfield, to me, he's the key tonight, running the football to set up Baker Mayfield. Yeah, the pokes hit the quarterback a lot. They take the ball away a lot. Oklahoma State's offense, led by a quarterback, Mason Rudolph, who went to Norman as a true freshman and upset the Sooners a year ago. Well, and now he's back for an encore and is having a huge year. A quarterback that when you look in the Big 12 and you see quarterbacks having ability to throw it downfield, He's as good as there is. J.W. Walsh also gets in. More of an option attack quarterback. When you see number two Rudolph in, it's kind of what you expect for the Big 12. They stretch you horizontally, and then they throw the ball downfield. James Washington, number 28, is the guy to keep an eye on. J.W. Walsh will come in in short yardage and goal line situations. These last five weeks in the red zone, they have been incredible, and it's because of J.W. Walsh. Their ability to run the football with him will be key to kind of offset what Mason Rudolph in that passing game will do. Walsh, one of those 17 seniors, will be extra emotional tonight. <laughs> The Pokes, underdogs on their home field, trying to shake off the playoff chase. To the winner goes the Big 12 title, coming up from Stillwater. We knew this gauntlet was coming in the Big 12 in November, and it is living up to expectations. How big is this game for the state of Oklahoma? Bedlam is looming large. The Big 12 championship is on the line. The Nissan Free Game Rush with John Saunders, Mac Brown, and Mark May is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This is the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. Commotion. Confusion. Chaos. That's Bedlam, the best-named rivalry, right with recent drama. Look out! This is 
It's been hot blooded and icy, wacky, and weird. But for decades, Bedlam equaled beatdown. Bud, Barry, Bob, and the Blue Bloods from Norman bullied the Stillwater upstarts while chasing championships. The Sooner Nation still demands dominance, reserving deeper hatred for rivals dressed in deeper orange. For the Pokes, passion always overflows, fighting uphill for Bedlam's top villain. Most of the time, The Sooners silence Les Miles' bravado by taking eight straight. Let's let me go for it. The Sooners have won it! Now, Mike Gundy, part of Bedlam for a quarter century, has state stalking Big 12 supremacy. Hungry to rebound. The Cowboys, underdogs filled with relief. The Sooners, fueled by Maybach. Swagger embodied by Heisman contender Baker Mayfield. The playoff bracket beckons. But tonight is Bedlam. Anything could happen, and probably will. When the Sooners and the Cowboys get together, you never know. Oklahoma has just taken the field. They've actually had a better record in this series here compared to Norman. They've won five out of the last six. Historically, of course, this is one-sided, but the Cowboys have had their moments, and they've had some big wins in recent years under Mike Gundy. Bob Stoops, eight and two, head-to-head -head against the former Oklahoma State quarterback. There is the Sooners quarterback tonight, Baker Mayfield's first taste of this Bedlam series. Began his career at Texas Tech and then redshirted in Norman a year ago, watching as the Cowboys stun the Sooners. His top receiver, Shepard, has had just a monster stretch run. Of course, his father played here, and he understands this rivalry and has been a part of the Oklahoma Sooner football family for a long time. You can imagine what's going through his mind as a senior. Eric Stryker, another senior, he had to learn what Bedlam is about. He comes from Florida, but he will be targeting those Oklahoma State quarterbacks tonight. You can bet on no that. No doubt about it. He has to have a big night along with Charles Tapper to be able to try to slow down Mason Rudolph and the Cowboys passing game. And the Cowboys, dressed in all orange tonight on senior night, and about to make their entrance with the nightclub lights and lasers and all that stuff. This is a team for whom the door was opened by Baylor's loss last night in Fort Worth. They got the great news that they can walk off this field tonight. Champions of the Big 12. And perhaps make a late case for their playoff suitability. I knew that they have put a lot of money into this stadium, but I didn't realize the whole stroke line here as they get ready to come in. This is pretty sweet. You better know your way to the field because it's <laughs> back in your way through that fog down there. That's pretty cool. Through the fog, here come the folks. The ice and the rain moved off, thankfully. It's still hovering near freezing at kickoff, but none of those awful conditions that really played a part in that TCU Baylor game down the road last night. To Tom Rinaldi on the field. Chris, thank you very much. Coach, misting right now, wet conditions forecast. How does that affect the game plan? Yeah, you just got to be smart, get two hands on the ball when you can and secure it, but it's not too bad right now. How do you coach the team to play in the moment, Bob, while knowing what's at stake? Well, you know, just do what you're what what you're asked to do. Don't try and do more. To me, that's the key. Play within yourself, do what we're asking you to do, and play hard. Good luck to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Chris. So Stoops, who has the upper hand in this rivalry, and his counterpart, Mike Gundy for Oklahoma State, in his 25th Bedlam game as a player assistant and now head coach. Heather Cox with him. Chris, thank you so much, Coach. The landscape changed dramatically last night, making tonight a winner-take-all game. How does that affect your mentality? Well, our guys are ready to play, and, and this is what we work for year-round. I'm sure both schools do. I know our guys have busted their tail. You put yourself in a position that if you win, you win the conference. I don't know what you can ask for in a long season other than that. As Chris just mentioned, it's hard to believe this is your 25th game as a player or a coach in this Bedlam game. What makes it so special in your mind? Well, we don't have professional football in Oklahoma. So during this 
week, everybody either wears orange or red. And it's a lot of fun for everybody. We know their coaches, we know their players, they know us. It's just a great rivalry. We'll let you get to it, Coach. Thank you. Chris? A rivalry, Heather, that divides the Gundy fan lake is Mike's brother, Kale, an assistant on the Sooner staff. And he said it well. They, they didn't need any extra inspiration, but they got it last night knowing they could be conference champs for the win. Anytime you can play your last regular season game, and you've got a chance to win a conference championship. I don't care where you're coaching. That's big. And Mike Gundy, uh, that, that loss for Baylor, opened up the door. And now they're, again, 60 minutes away from having a chance to surprise a lot of people. I don't know how many people back in August would have said that Oklahoma State has a chance to win the Big 12 championship. For that matter, I don't know how many people would have said Oklahoma has a chance to win the Big 12 championship. And the winner of this game will be the conference champ. Both teams came off subpar seasons a year ago. There's a fan being attended to in the end zone. A photographer apparently got knocked down in the pregame runout, so you can see some security personnel surrounding the photographer and giving some assistance there. And while Oklahoma has won the talks as I they have done so I believe the last six games and they've chosen to defer to the Cowboys to get the football different night different strategy two weeks ago we had them in Waco against Baylor and because of Baylor's ability to score a lot of points they, they won that toss that night and they wanted to try to get Baker Mayfield and that offense out of the field as fast as they could they Tonight, they're putting the defense out there. Well, 35 years ago, Kirk, there was the famed ice ball. We thought midweek there might be a sequel, but thankfully, the, the ice storm has sort of moved away. The temperature is 34. There's still a chance of some precipitation. The wind is going to swirl around, but yeah, there were some fears that a repeat of this game way back in 85 when Mike Gundy was actually a recruit visiting, watching this game. Old Thurman Thomas managed to skate his way to a big game, but the folks got shut out, and somehow, Navigated to 13 points. A, a field goal was kicked by Blackshear in this game. And the Sooners won it, but but thankfully no ice bowl two tonight. No, that's good. It, you're right. Early in the week, it sounded like we might be heading in that direction. There's a lot of talent on those teams, especially Oklahoma. You go back to 1985. Some great players. Of course, Gundy says he does play the card that the Sooners will never fully respect the Cowboys. They know they've gotten their attention in recent years. That upset of Oklahoma as a three touchdown underdog a year ago in Norman where they were 14 points down with five minutes to play a rally to win it in overtime was a huge boost propelling this team forward. And I think the loss by the Sooners and then the loss in the bowl game really has fueled their revival this season. So Bedlam had a big impact on both teams a year ago. No doubt about it. I mean, when you win a game like that for Mike Gundy, you're right, it, it propels you into the offseason, creates some confidence. And I completely agree with Bob Stoops in Oklahoma. They were humiliated in that game, even worse in their bowl game against Clemson. Bob made some adjustments, did some things he doesn't very often do, and having to let some coaches go, brought in some new coaches. And I think the Tennessee game early in the year in Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, the way they had to come back to win, I think reestablished some confidence that they lost a year ago. And it's been a magical year so far for the Sooners. We'll see what happens here in, their, in the last game of the year. Yep, conference title on the line. Sooners trying to navigate into that playoff. Nick Hudson to kick it off. Chris Lacey and Jeff Carr deep for the Cowboys. driven through the end zone. So we'll see Mason Rudolph, the sophomore out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Not a highly coveted recruit out of high school, but Mike Gundy spotted some things he liked in this guy, and what a two-year career he's had so far. Yeah, and it really since their bye week, he has been on fire. He's taking care of the football. He's thrown for close to 1,700 yards since the bye week, 12 touchdowns, one interception, and that'll have to continue. He's got to be able to take care of the football tonight against a very aggressive and athletic Sooners defense. But on senior night, the senior J.W. Walsh, number four, gets the official start. One of the unusual backfield formations we'll see, kind of the inverted wishbone look. And that's Glidden in motion. Walsh is going to throw on first down. Completes it to Marcel Aitman. And he has a 
gained to the 35 yard line. So Walsh, who is a very competent passer, opens up Byron Kirk. Yeah, and he has a, a great deal of experience. But one thing you don't see a lot from him this year is he, he doesn't throw the ball a ton. He only has 29 attempts on the entire year. I mean, Oklahoma's been told all week, when number four comes into the game, you're thinking about the quarterback run game and the zone read and triple option look. And the first play for Mike Gundy comes out throwing the football to try to kind of break some tendencies against the Sooners defense. It was just his 24th completion, but he's thrown 11 touchdown passes, hasn't thrown a pick yet. So as we said, very confident. Flag before the snap. It's a false start on the Cowboys. False start. Offense number 73 five yard penalty first down. You know you and I Chris opened up the season a year ago our first game together actually on Saturday night and they played in, in Arlington against Florida State the defending national champs and I, I was really impressed with J.W. Walsh that night that night he was running and throwing and doing a lot of different things prior to his injury and since then Mason Rudolph has taken over but he still has a package usually it's been short yardage and red zone this is unusual for him this year and Walsh takes off tries to find some room to the boundary hit immediately by big Charles Tapper the senior defensive end so they're going to be very alert for those quarterback runs as and you said before is in there Charles Tapper is a senior and a veteran that is really one of the, the guys that gets this football team focused and helps create energy on the defensive side of the ball. He will be a handful. Oklahoma State, if there's one area that to me in this matchup is a concern for them, it's the matchup in the trenches. The Sooners come in with a lot of confidence. Oklahoma State's just trying to manage things up front at the line of scrimmage. Second and 13, that's Jeff Carr. The freshman goes in motion. And they hand it off left side, Rennie Childs. The junior from Houston knocked down quickly by Matt Diamond. It'll be third long. It's a very different feel as an offense. You know, if you watch Big 12 football, you're used to seeing tempo. You're used to seeing quarterbacks with three, four wide receivers in the game, sometimes five receivers in the game, and it's speedball. They're trying to get the ball spread out and get you out in space. It's a, a, a not only is it a different feel with J.W. Walsh, but the tempo is very different from what you're seeing from Mason Rudolph and how the Cowboys attack. Chris Carson, the junior from Georgia, number 32, the back to the left of Walsh on third and ten. Straight back, four-man rush, Walsh fires over the head, far side, and it's uh, adrenaline on the part of the quarterback as they, they start Walsh in a bit of a wrinkle, but now they have to punt. Yeah, and Oklahoma will mix up their coverage. The Sooners, Bob Stoops and Mike Stoops feel that like any defense, if they can get Oklahoma State to that third and eight, third and long situation, they will mix up their looks, play a lot of zone. But that time on third down, it, they brought Stryker late, and they played man-to-man -man coverage. He had an open man. He just overthrew it. Freshman Zach Siner in the punt. Sterling Shepard is the return man, but it's short. Bounces in front of him and is down by the Cowboys at the 30. That's where Baker Mayfield will take over. The junior, as we said, from Austin, began his career at Texas Tech, left there, sat out last year, beat out Trevor Knight for the job. 33 touchdowns, five interceptions, as you said earlier, Kirk, coming off that big shot to the head, that mild concussion against TCU last week. Well, it makes great decisions with the football. To, to come into an offense with Lincoln Riley bringing it over from East Carolina, to only have five interceptions on the entire year, and he's a creative guy. He will do a lot of different things, uh, but the most important thing is he's has great command of the offense. But keep in mind, as much as we talk about Baker Mayfield, to me, it's the offensive line and the running of P. Ryan is the key tonight for the Sooners. P. Ryan is the left of Mayfield. They fake it to him. They fire out to Jarvis Baxter, who's got some space across midfield, shoved out by Jordan Stearns, but the Sooners are rolling already. That was a problem for Oklahoma State last week against Baylor, was not so much the receivers on the outside, it was the slot receivers against the safeties. That time they go after Jordan Stearns in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's 17 on that play, and now Mayfield shoots near side. Neal makes a catch down near the 25-yard line as he beats Kevin Peterson. So Baker comes out firing. Yeah, Baker Mayfield again, again, great feel for what he wants to do with this offense. Lincoln Riley putting him in a position with all the hype and the buildup in the game. Instead of easing their way in, they're just coming out with guns blazing, throwing the football, attacking this Cowboys defense. Yeah, this is not easing their way in. 17 yards, 22 yards, and now Mayfield wants more, but he cannot escape. 
knocked down. He'll be chased all night by Emmanuel Agba, the sack master of the Houston. Remember, this is an Oklahoma State defense that gave up some big plays to Baylor. 396 through the air to Baylor. Uh, they also struggled against TCU, 445 yards against TCU. So right away, you can see Lincoln Riley has confidence in both the run and the pass, but right now trying to go after that secondary. 13th sack for Agba. 37 for the Cowboys offense, so on second and 13, Mayfield on the run, flips it across the middle, but taking a huge shot there. Trey Flowers delivered it, knocked the ball loose. Andrews, the freshman receiver. Well, that is a great hit, and Baker Mayfield was fooled by the coverage. He was expecting man-to-man. -man. Trey Flowers looked like he was sinking back, and then right there, is up, ends up timing up his hit against Mark Andrews just perfectly, but that's on the quarterback, Baker Mayfield. He can't leave his receiver out to try like that. They confused him by mixing up the coverage. Play clock running down as the noise arrives on third and 13. Mayfield, half protection, no one to throw to. Now rolls and just fires a low shot incomplete on the near sideline so Oklahoma gets 39 yards on its first two plays but then the drive stalls uh, give Brent Spencer and the Oklahoma State Cowboys secondary a lot of credit on those last couple plays uh, they did a really nice job of mixing up their looks you could even see Baker Mayfield back there we've seen him when he gets confused at times and when he doesn't trust it he usually likes to buy time and dance around but the Cowboys did a good enough job to chase him out of that pocket Austin Seibert, a very solid true freshman picker. They've been perfect from 40 to 49, but that one never got held properly. It looked like he kicked the laces and it comes up short. Yeah, I'm with you. It looked like they did not do a very good job of getting that ball, not just down, but turned away. The laces need to be turned away. Yeah, that was not Mike Black up here, one of the spotters for us, <laughs> Chris Fowler's spotter. He would, he would not approve of that at all. That was not good. So the Sooners move the ball quickly, but come up empty in their opening possession. And the Cowboys go to work next in Bedlam. Second possession for the Cowboys. And J.W. Wallace, the senior, who's not been the starter this year, is back out there, Kurt, for his second series. Rudolph had an ankle tweak against Baylor, but was said to be healthy, has been practicing. This is not about that, we don't believe. I don't think so. I think it's more, maybe they feel J.W. Walsh's style gives the Sooners defense maybe a little bit more to deal with. Empty backfield for Walsh. No one open. This is what he brings his skill set. It's a nice first down run before Ahmad Thomas stops him. Let's take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players for Oklahoma State, a, a team that usually relies on throwing the football. Uh, again, J.W. Walsh usually just red zone. James, James Washington, David Glidden in the passing game. Washington more your vertical threat. Glidden is more of your receiver over the slot. Eric Stryker with a pass rush. And Zach Sanchez, number 15, is one corner. And Jordan Thomas, the other, got to have big nights. Mike Scoop's telling us that's the key to the whole game. Carson goes in motion. Walsh hit immediately as Matt Diamond penetrated and dropped him. Uh, you know, you see zone reads so often, and you're reading this guy right here. Watch how fast he collapses down on the back. I think he confused J.W. Walsh. J.W. Walsh was anticipating him staying with the running back, but by pulling it, you've got to give Matt Diamond a lot of credit just because of his intensity and how quickly he collapsed down. That speed of which he did, he was able to do that, I think confused Walsh on the read. You got Charles Tapper, Charles Walker, and Stryker who get most of the attention, but Matt Diamond having a fine season as well, the junior. So it's third and seven for the Cowboys. Walsh has plenty of protection from the pocket, delivers a strike across the middle. Completion. And James Washington, the big play receiver for the Cowboys, moves to Oklahoma's 45-yard line before Jordan Thomas wrestles him out. And this is Oklahoma's answer. Rush three, drop eight. But look at the patience right here to find the throwing lane. Nice job letting the receiver Washington clear. It took a great job of the offensive line also protecting. But J.W. Walsh, a runner, showing the patience, making the right read until his receiver cleared over the middle. Got 23 yards on third and seven. How sweet does it feel for this guy who's been a loyal role player this year to get the start on senior night? 
Chris Carson running right. This bulldozes for about seven on first down. You gotta love the guy just because of everything that he stands for. And if you've watched this Oklahoma State team play this second half, he's been very similar to what Baker Mayfield has been as far as just providing a spark. Uh, when he's come in in the red zone in short yardage, when he makes a play, he's, you know, he scores a touchdown, he's celebrating with his teammates. The team seems to feed off of that energy. But this has been very different tonight from anything that we've seen from him this year. As I said, he's been playing quarterback in the past, but not this year. Watch delivers, far side, Washington makes the catch and is not muscled out. He's the son of a legendary high school football coach. He wants to be a coach. When he was a third grader, before he did his homework, he told me his dad had him out in the backyard running the veer. And he, was, he had to write a paper at school talking about decision making as a young guy. For him, he said the important decision, you run the veer right or left. That was <laughs> what he was focused on as a third grader. For real. I love it. <laughs> First down from Oklahoma's 30. Good looking drive here. And Walsh back looking to throw again for the end zone. Over the head of Washington who just got a hand on it. Had some room. He had Will Johnson, the nickelback beaten. Uh, what they're doing is doing a great job of protecting him when he gets back to throw the football. And then they're using crossing rounds, which is occupying the defensive backs. You're right, he gets away from Washington, but it was the other safety, Stephen Parker, who went over the cross across the middle because of another wide receiver that he was following and opened up the middle of the field perfectly a little bit more air under that and that's a touchdown for the Cowboys Sooners up pressing those receivers on second and ten Walsh fires near side and immediately flying up to knock down Childs a couple of Sooners including Jordan Thomas you see this play so much kind of a look pass just get the ball outside these defensive backs are getting more and more accustomed to it watch Jordan Thomas number seven fight off of his block and right away just gets up there to disrupt the rhythm of that play did a nice job not just making the tackle but first he had to get through that block which he was able to do now it's third down along again yeah, they're very much in fringe field goal range for Ben Grogan, who hasn't kicked one in the last five games. Need nine on third down. Schooners showing pressure. Walsh backpedaling delivers into traffic. The catch is made at the 26, but knocked down immediately is Jeff Carr. They're a striker there. A striker. They're, they're bringing him late. They're disguising it up as a linebacker, and then he's doing a very good job here early in this game on third down of being able to time that blitz, time the blitz, and be able to get after the quarterback and get him off of his spot. Ben Grogan kicked a chip shot in overtime to cap the upset of Oklahoma in last year's Bedlam game. Has been little used this year, especially in the last five games. This is from 43, which would equal his long this season. Drives it just through. So Oklahoma misses their field goal. Oklahoma State makes theirs and jumps on top 3 0. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart. Stop by a store or visit us at walmart.com to share wonder every day. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper in college football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. Well, you, you should know by now, but, but just in case you don't, you're going to get the Watch ESPN app to stream every game live, download it, or go to watch ESPN.com. Take college football with you. A lot of the eyes of the nation on this game tonight. Oklahoma playoff position number three. All the teams around the Sooners have already won. Notre Dame trailing early at Stanford. The Irish trying to state their case. Cowboys and Sooners in their regular season finale. Playing for the Big 12 title. Rogan to boot it away. And Alex Ross at the five. And Ross is free. Alex Ross to midfield. A foot race. Knocked down at the four. That's the kickoff return Oklahoma fans have been waiting all season for. Ross returned a couple for touchdowns a year ago. He hasn't gotten loose like that all year, though. No, and give the wedge a lot of credit.
credit for some great blocks to open this up. This is something you work on and see if he's just tired or if he's injured. But watch the blocks up front. Nice job of getting a hat on a hat here. It just opened up and the speed of Ross, he's been able to split it. I'm surprised he ends up getting caught there from behind to prevent the touchdown by Jones, the, the corner. His, it looked like his ankle maybe got caught underneath there, but boy, what a great job. Here's pi Pylon Cam here. Great job by that wedge. They opened that up completely to give Ross that crease that he needed. Mayfield said, we're going to have good field position if he doesn't score. 90-yard return by Alex Ross, a junior from Jenks, Oklahoma. It's been really a sore spot as he continues to be attended to down there near the goal line. Just have not been able to break loose. And many of the same players involved, Bob Soup's not sure why it's taken this long to have a huge return but it's a good time for it yeah and for him he, he you know he's, he has been a tailback he's had a lot of carries before P Ryan came along and he's been for the most part on special teams so when he gets his opportunities that's a bit in a, especially being from jinx playing at a, a traditional power in this state having a chance to be able to have a a big moment here hopefully he's going to be okay and be able to get up you know he's disappointed about not reaching the end zone but after a frustrating season, which has seen Oklahoma 112th in the country, an average kickoff return distance, Ross breaks out. And finally, help to his feet. 39 yards per kick been their previous long return this year. Connor Knight had a great block on that play. Jackson Ewells, another great block. Boy, that's going to be one of those when you get into the special teams film room. It'll be about four or five guys that did a, just a perfect job of setting that up. And as again, Ross has the speed to be able to almost take it all the way to the end zone. That kind of a player, of course, can switch momentum immediately, quiet down. Boone Pickett Stadium after the Cowboys had driven 44 yards and nine plays for their field goal. Oklahoma has been devastating in the red zone. They've been in the red zone more than any team in the FBS. This is their 62nd red zone trip. They've scored 40 touchdowns, kicked 14 field goals. You expect to see big number 32, Samaji Piran, in this situation. Yeah, and, and of course, the way they attacked on that first series, they, they threw the ball for the most part. Piran didn't get his hands on the football because of the way Lincoln Riley decided to come out and throw the ball. Yeah, I'm with you. You got to believe the big fella is going to get the ball down here inside the five yard line. 230 pound back to the right of Mayfield. They fake it to him and throw a touchdown pass. Out of the slot, Sterling Shepard. A senior from Oklahoma City with his 11th touchdown this season. You know, if you're going to go play action down inside the five-yard line, that's a great time because you and I and Glenn Spencer and the defense, they're thinking the same thing. And watch what it does. Look how it gets the defense up. And now you've got the opening right there. And Baker Mayfield is able to put that ball right where he needs to put it. Guy who's second Oklahoma career charts in receiving yards with his 70th catch of the season. The slant set about the kickoff return puts OU on top. Wow, just a great play call. Lincoln Riley, first and 10 play action. Goes to one of the best receivers in the country. And early in this game, they're using P. Ryan more as a decoy, throwing the football against his Cowboys defense. ESPN's got you covered tomorrow morning for week 12 in the NFL. 10 o'clock Eastern, the Insider's Sunday edition with all the news. Then on Sunday NFL Countdown, a couple of special guests. Thomas Davis, Josh Norman, the undefeated Panthers. Join the gang as guest analysts all throughout the show. This is streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. So Cam Newton taking in the Iron Bowl today. Couldn't get the Tigers over the hump at home against the Crimson Tide, though. Hops in to kick off. Oklahoma, a one-play, four-yard touchdown drive to claim the lead. This is Jeff Carr at the two and the freshman. Looking for a room, cuts it back. And is knocked down across the 30. This week's college football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We mentioned that Clemson, a harder win at the road against the Gamecocks. Game not quite as close as that score would indicate. Auburn battled Alabama for a while. Notre Dame just kicked a field goal. They trailed the Palo Alto by a point. Yeah, Michigan State 
really, really impressive with what they were able to do with so much uh, at stake there against Penn State. Now, Auburn, Alabama game, pretty competitive. Auburn, Auburn played pretty well in that game for the most part. If Oklahoma wins, you don't see any changes in the committee's top four? I, I can't see? imagine Oklahoma dropping out. I, I think if they win this game, they're, they're going to be in the top four. So Walsh is still in the game. He flips it complete there to Brandon Shepard. No relation, but it is curious now that in all three series we haven't seen Mason Rudolph. Who they say wasn't feeling the effects of that ankle too much, not, not to keep him out. And I, you can see him down there. I watched him warm ups. It wasn't, it, you know, it wasn't as if you thought, why well, something's something just doesn't seem right. He, he seemed like he was okay. I wonder if it's just a strategy thing that they feel that. J.W. Walsh and, and the way he can attack gives him a better chance. Walsh throwing again over the middle. Complete dart down inside the 40-yard line. It's an accurate throw to Austin Hayes, the tall junior out of San Antonio. And because it's his zone, he has to get that football thrown in there in a hurry. That's a soft spot in the zone behind the linebackers and between the safety and the corner. And he puts that ball right where he has to put it and gives Hayes a chance to secure it down low away from the defender. And Walsh Kirk, he said he attempted only 29 passes all season long. Seven for nine tonight already for 77 yards. Empty backfield again on first down. Five receivers for Walsh. There's a sooner pressure. He backpedals and delivers for a short gain on the far side. The first time we've seen Oklahoma bring more than four. Uh, they, they did bring the pressure and they was able, they were able to get through. But J.W. Walsh and his athletic ability, it's a real strength of his. He just bought a little bit of time, and that's a win for Oklahoma State. It's, you know, it's not a sack. He didn't throw an interception. He didn't have to throw it away. He picked up a couple yards, and just showing Oklahoma that, hey, I, I see your pressure, I feel it, and uh, I welcome it. Those Oklahoma State wide receivers against man-to-man, -man, they can make you pay for it when you blitz them. Almost the freshman, Jalen McCluskey. They really spread the ball around this offense. And now Walsh looking to throw again. Delivers near side. Shepard again. Knocked down inside the 30 by Jordan Thomas. It's right near the marker. And it will be a first down. Heather? Chris and Kirk, I can confirm from Oklahoma State officials that they are holding Mason Rudolph out right now because they're keeping an eye on him after he did sustain that foot injury in last week's game. Yes, Mike Gundy admitted he wants to run in, but they're also protecting him. Meantime, Walsh just keeps firing and throws a touchdown to Jawan Seals. And the Cowboys reclaim the lead. Boy, a little slant and go here by Seals. Zach Sanchez is saying that he got pushed in the back. It's a slant and go, one-on-one -on -one matchup. Definitely has the push there with the slick turf. Sanchez goes down, but that's what Zach Sa Sanchez was upset about. So, 70-yard drive in five plays with Walsh just on fire. And Rogan for the PAT as Oklahoma State reclaims the lead. Bedlam, wild as we expect in the early going. Hubbard with your Dr. Pepper Championship Drive update. Number six, Notre Dame at number nine, Stanford. Sean Kaiser to Will Fuller, 73 yard touchdown. Irish right now on top, 20 to 14 in the second. Chris Herbie, back to you guys. Notre Dame, 10 points to claim the lead. Oklahoma fans will be keeping an eye on that. They'll feel more comfortable about their chances if they win, should the Irish lose. But for now, your immediate concern. Underdog Cowboys jumped on top 10-7. Rowan drives it to Ross. He just had the big return and appears to be okay. Recovered from that, but takes a huge shot. Ball comes out. Cowboys cover it. Say no fumble. They're ruling that Ross was down. A huge shot was delivered by Devontae Averett, the linebacker. And now some jawing between the teams, not for the first time in this rivalry. It looked like Ross's knee was down, and then the ball came out. They're going to obviously take a look at it if they need to. That it's was a, a big-time hit. I mean, a heavy hit. Right there, that knee goes down right away. The ruling on the field is that the runner's forward progress was stopped before the ball came out. First down. Well, the forward progress was certainly stopped. Let's see if the knee well, was down. Watch that knee, how quickly it goes down. Look at that collision. You can see the ball He's there. 
This might be a better angle. Watch he shatters his face mask. I mean, there's paint flying everywhere. Contact. There's a good look at it right here. Watch Avery come in and just lower the bone. Bang, right there. That knee goes down right away. Richard Jordan is the Big 12 replay official looking at this. You're right, that was a violent yeah. collision. When the yeah. paint goes flying yeah. off the helmet, yeah. the face mask. Yeah. There's some collisions going on down there. Oklahoma keeps the football from the 23. And finally, they feed Samaji Piran, whose gang tackled after a one-yard gain, Kevin Peterson. So when it is a poor progress situation, it's really not reviewable. Dave Kataya, our rules expert, is here. Once they set forward progress, yeah. replays out of it. Okay. Okay. Big hit. Paint flying out there, Dave. Absolutely. Absolutely huge hit. There's going to be no forward progress after that shot. <laughs> Piran. Leaning a yard in his first carry, and now play action second down, delivered over the head of Dede Westbrook. So third and long now for Mayfield. You know, we've made so much about Oklahoma since that Texas loss. You know, their first five games, 144 yards a game on the ground. In the last six games, they have been running the football. 292 a game on the ground. It's been P. Ryan and Joe Mixon together. And Glenn Spencer, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma State, knew coming in. He said, hey, they have two NFL running backs. We have got to load up against this line of scrimmage in this running game. And as scary as it sounds, we've got to make Baker Mayfield and his group of wide receivers beat us. Cowboys showing pressure on third and nine and bring it. Mayfield escapes. Looking to throw now, tucks the ball and runs across the 30, short of a first down, driven out in the Cowboys bench and bounces up from that big shot. And some Johnny, he's an emotional, feisty guy. Seth Jacobs delivered that shot. Well, they do a good job of showing pressure. And then watch, look at this, look at all these guys at the line of scrimmage. You see this in the NFL lot, and then the snap of the ball, three of them drop and four of them come. So they're able to sit back and play zone, but they create confusion with Glenn Spencer's look by showing you seven guys up close to the line of scrimmage. And by playing zone, they're able to locate the quarterback who's scrambling and then lower the, the boom there with Seth Jacobs. Seibert, the only true freshman to handle both the place kicking and punting duties, boots it deep and Jalen McCluskey calls for a fair catch, so. Oklahoma State answering the big special teams played by the Sooners with a touchdown drive and then some huge hits. Yeah, they, they, they have come into this football game and they are defensively and on special teams, you know, they are playing physical. They're taking the fight to Oklahoma. They're not saying, hey, we're intimidated by the ranking and all the tradition and the excellence of Oklahoma football. They're, they're welcoming this challenge and, you know, J.W. Walsh and his leadership, a big part of that on the offensive side of the ball to such a great start tonight. Ten of 12 through the air. Remember, this is a quarterback that coming into the night only had 29 attempts on the entire year. And again, had to report in the last series as Walsh was checking a touchdown pass that apparently this is his game tonight. On the reverse, the flea flicker, Walsh looking downfield, blows into coverage, and it's broken up, almost intercepted by Stephen Parker. Sooners ready for that trick play. Uh, Stephen Parker was back there waiting. And Marcel Aitman does a good job of trying to sell this. Watch him right here, and you'll see Parker just sit back and kind of wait on it. He saw it the whole time, but watch how Aitman kind of sells it like, ah, nothing's going on. Now he goes, but Parker's just back there waiting. It was almost, almost like it was a, a fair catch for a punt. He high points the ball, but Aitman's there to try to keep him away and distract the football. Parker made the massive play to break up the two-point conversion pass attempt by TCU as the Horn Frogs were going for the win last week. Handoff to Carson. He just runs right over Dominique Alexander, the linebacker. This is a, it's a very aggressive and said physical start for the guys in orange. No doubt about it. You know, they, they have come into this game, and you can imagine when you get into a rivalry game and you hear about all the talk all week about what's at stake for you and what's at stake for them. To me, it's so much about emotions and momentum when you get into these rivalry games, but you got to give the Cowboys and Mike Gunning and his staff a lot of credit for coming out and playing with a certain mentality early in this game. Cowboys actually had 12 guys in the offensive huddle. Center judge runs in there. Play clock is still running down. Is it two? 
Now we'll sort this out. They had to hustle a man off the field. Oklahoma State. That's our first charge. Spend a time out. That'll be a 30-second timeout. JW, man, that last touchdown drive. Yeah, JW Walsh is, is just kind of feeling it. How, how great is this to see Senior Day, a guy that hasn't, he's been more of a short yardage or red zone guy. This drive, the last time they had the ball, four throws. And here's the, the big one where he puts it up in the air and relies on his receiver to go up and make a play on the football. And Jawan Seals, a highly talented individual coming out of Fort Arthur, Texas, 6'2", about 198 pounds, goes up and makes the play and gives the Cowboys the lead. But A.W. Walsh, man, in for Mason Rudolph and off to a great start. Walsh was sick last week, had a fever, really couldn't play very well, wasn't a factor at all in the loss to Baylor. Even though Rudolph was hobbled and really couldn't move at all at the end of the game, they didn't go to Walsh because he was subpar, but he looks healthy and ready for his senior night moment senior tonight. Night. That's right. Remember, third and, third and medium like this, you always have the quarterback run game, and that's something that Oklahoma is well aware of with number four back there. But you also have one-on-one -on -one opportunities out on the perimeter with these receivers. Sooners have not been a great third down defense this year. They bring pressure. Walsh delivers incomplete. They really forced the issue, tried to find Glidden on the near sideline, but he was defended over there by Will Johnson. So fourth down. The, the adjustment that Mike Stoops has made for a defense that's been playing more to zone the last three or four weeks, and rushing three and dropping eight, rushing four and dropping seven, here with Walsh, I think they feel he's less effective by bringing the blitz. That time they brought Parker and also the linebacker, Alexander, trying to disrupt his rhythm and make him throw the football a little bit quicker than he's ready for. Signer, there's a nice punt. Shepard makes the catch and scampers out at the 34-yard line as we check in with Cassidy Hubbard for an update. Hi, Cassidy. Hey, Chris. Taco Bell studio update. Stanford responding quickly. Kevin Hogan to Michael Rector, who breaks a tackle and takes it in for six. 21-20, Cardinal now. 12 seconds to go in the second. Back to you. Cardinal believe that they can make a playoff case even with two losses if they can beat the Irish need some help yeah, you have to yeah, win. Yeah, if, if, you know, if, if they go on to then remember they got USC and by the way congratulations to Clay Helton and USC beating UCLA up there. Everything that they've been through losing having to let Steve Sarkeesian go to all the injuries that was a big win today for SC. So Piran with his second carry bus loose. Sabaji Piran to midfield. They will not catch him. Touchdown, Oklahoma. 68 yards. That's why you got to beat the big fella. Yeah, that, that's what you're accustomed to seeing from Oklahoma. And I was surprised at how quickly P. Ryan was able to get to the edge. I think that's a mistake by Oklahoma State's defense. That was too easy for him to get outside. He really didn't rely on that much blocking on the outside, but he gets to the edge in the corner, and he shows you he's got some speed. He sure does, man. Seibert knocks it through. Oklahoma reclaims the lead. He's big, he's tough, he's strong, and you're right, he's got tremendous speed and flexibility. No doubt about it. Watch the big fella right here. You have Brown right here who makes a block, but watch how easy he bounces. I would have thought it would have been a linebacker maybe scraping, but he does it. That's not. He gets caught up right there. And look at this. You don't have anybody to block for the, the right guard and the right tackle. And then you have the receiver and the defensive back on the outside. And he's in man-to-man -man coverage. Watch D.D. Westbrook right here. Eventually, you, the corner, Hunter realizes that Samaji Piran's coming down the sidelines, and D.D. Westbrook hustles all the way downfield to pick up that key block to let him get into the end zone. The perils of man coverage on the corner. Yeah. Bailing didn't even know the running back. No, he's got his back well. turned in man-to-man -man coverage. By the time he realized that Piran's coming down the side, he turns, takes a, a peek, and D.D. Westbrook does a nice job of helping to finish off that play and getting P. Ryan all the way to the end zone. But that, that's a mistake by Oklahoma State to allow P. Ryan to get to that edge that fast. Both senior touchdown drives have been one play. You saw the Alex Ross kickoff return, which set up the Mayfield to Shepard four-yard pass. And then P. Ryan, 68 yards to the house in 11 seconds. Back and forth, folks. We, we promised you some fun tonight in Stillwater. Had a few lead changes already. 
Like great start to this game. He came out throwing the ball, as you said, using Piran as a decoy, but he's too great to use as a decoy for long. Yeah, no doubt about it. A true sophomore who really does have the look of an NFL ready running back right now. Not yet eligible for the draft, of course. Jeff Carr and just take a knee and the Cowboys will take over. Hey, Chris, let's go back and watch this and watch D.D. Westbrook. You let, the, let this roll. You'll see D.D. Westbrook down the sideline out here. Watch him and what he does to confuse Hunter. He's acting like the, it's a deep ball coming to him right here. Hunter's thinking it's going to be a bomb. And look at, look at him. He's going, I'm, I'm going to catch it. Hunter's trying to go make a play on the ball. Little does he know that here comes Samaji Piran running down the sideline and into the end zone. That's like a shortstop trying to fake, you know, like the ball's coming. The little things a receiver can do. That was great. Well, and so what a wash and the Cowboys have to do to answer that one play touchdown drive. And off inside, they get inside striker with Raymond Taylor, but Jordan Evans, the linebacker, knocked him down. Yeah, he's like, I saw you. I saw you. Good job. Good job. I see you. That was great. This is a big series for Dave J.W. Walsh because the momentum for the most part, when we talked about momentum shifts and rivalry games, momentum for the most part in this first quarter has favored Walsh and the Cowboys, but the big run by Piran, how does Oklahoma State respond to that? Walsh on second and nine, delivers a short pitch. Catch made there by James Washington. It'll be third down at about three. Zach Sanchez on the tackle. I, I, I think a matchup here that, that's going to help decide this football game is Oklahoma is mixing up looks, but they're more willing to blitz and leave their defensive backs man to man. For Walsh, he's had some opportunities to make plays in the pass game. Can his receivers get after the Oklahoma secondary in man-to-man -man coverage? Who will win that battle on the perimeter is going to go a long way in deciding who wins this game. Hopes have not been a good third and short offense. They've struggled with the offensive line, creating creases. So an empty backfield for Walsh. Sooners are keeping an eye on the quarterback. Now they motion the guy, and Walsh just takes off. It's a straight run. He's going to be knocked out right near the marker at the 35 by Charles Walker. See where they spot it. Well, you know, Tapper and Stryker get so much attention, but the night that you and I had Oklahoma in Baylor, Charles Walker was the guy that I left that night, number 97, really impressed with. A sophomore, 6'2", 297 pounds, really, really quick for his size, and he gets it, does a good job of getting off blocks, which he did right there to force him short of that first down. They bump Walsh out a yard short, so final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Signer in punt formation. Shepard, fair catch at the 23 yard line with 10 seconds to play in the quarter. Monday Night Football on ESPN. Rivals in the AFC North. Ravens against the Browns. All starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 o'clock, then kickoff at 8.15. Also streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. So you called it a big series for the Cowboys. They could not stem the momentum. And now Mayfield, P. Ryan and company go back to work. And the last time they had the ball, the big run by P. Ryan, they, they were able to seal the edge and open up the outside running lane there for P. Ryan. Two back look now as Joe Mixon, number 25, joins P. Ryan. This has been used with increasing frequency and effectiveness by Oklahoma. P. Ryan hammers straight ahead, knocked down by Chad Whitener, the middle linebacker. What will be the final play of an entertaining opening quarter in the Bedlam series here in Stillwater? Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Presented by Walmart, part of ESPN's rivalry series. Presented by Jiffy Lube. This has been a terrific rivalry in recent years. Upsets. Crazy plays. You, you've seen your share of crazy events in this series. A lot of them here in Stillwater. Yeah, I, I, it's a lot of fun to watch watch these two teams on the field together, especially when there's so much at stake. The winner tonight ends up securing a Big 12 championship bid and a 
OU wins, more than likely they're going to finish in the top four. Mayfield on second and six now escapes the pocket and cuts it back across the 30. It'll be third and short. Seth Jacobs and Vincent Taylor stopped him. Yeah, you know, it's only one quarter into this game, but a big, big plan for Oklahoma State was not just loading up to trying to stop Piran in the running game, but, but trying to do the best they could against Baker Mayfield and his creativity and the different things that he can do, how elusive he can be. And for the most part, we're early in this game, but they've done a pretty good job of corralling him and not letting him get out and make those big plays. Only their 13th play, and Mayfield, who had two quick completions to begin the game, only has one since. They need three. He fires complete. That's Shepard, but he's wrestled down very quickly by Kevin Peterson, and the spot will determine whether this is a first down or not. It's close. You know, Kevin Peterson is a field corner, but they move him over the slot to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Sterling Shepard. That's pretty good coverage there, and a strong throw, a strong arm what about by the Baker here? Mayfield. That spot, to me, looks pretty accurate. Gave him a first down. It was very close when that knee came down where the ball was. Two back look. Mixon, his first carry. Needs a block from Mayfield. Gets one and is off and running. It's Mixon's turn for a long touchdown for the Sooners. 66 yards. Big play, running attack, with a little help from the Heisman yeah, game in the quarterback. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? That's why, what a great run. What an athlete Joe Mixon is to be able to cut this back and keep this play alive. But I want you to keep an eye on the quarterback right here and watch what he does. And watch him, even after the block, what he does. He opens that up right there. I'll tell you, Joe Mixon out in the open field has some serious speed for his size at 220 pounds. Well, Gundy said, I got two NFL-bound running backs I got to defend. And each has scored in the long run right there. A depleting block from the quarterback, yeah, by the way. It, it was amazing. I'm watching him the whole time. I'm thinking, boy, great job here by Mixon. Is the quarterback going to make a block? Boom, he does. But he's not done. He's so excited. Now he's trying to race Mixon, trying to get to the end zone. This is what this team loves about this guy. He wants to be the first one there to celebrate yeah. and let Joe Mixon know how much he appreciates they it. They feed up Mayfield's energy. Sooners now up by 11, early second. Our Pacific Life game summary, they'll look at the, the one-two punch. Some of them have called this, you know, thunder and lightning, but I think you got you got two lightnings, and they're both and the, good power backs, too. Yeah, I think they're both thunder and lightning by themselves. <laughs> uh, and, and you can see, you, you kind of bottle things up. You, you don't allow them to get out. And then in the blink of an eye, a couple big runs, and they're both in the end zone and got an 11-point lead. Line drive kick by Seibert is fielded by Carr on the bounce. Freshman works his way down the sidelines. Oklahoma State had only given up a 42-yard run. That was the longest all season until those two touchdowns. To Tom Rinaldi on the center sideline. Well, Chris, normally when you make a run like Joe Mixon just made, you come back and you're the star of the sideline. But Baker Mayfield got just as big, if not an even bigger reception after the block he threw to help spring Mixon. Two Sooners being celebrated on the sideline after that huge play. And you know, Tommy, honestly, we talk about intangibles of football teams, talk about leadership of football teams. That, that's what he provides. That, that, those are things you, 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 unless you're watching, you just don't really appreciate how that team feeds off of his leadership. Offense and defense, right? No doubt. The whole he, team. He just has the fun coaches. playing ball. Yeah, he does. So the Cowboys now, a little urgency here. Rennie Childs, a short gain on first down. And that's why when Mayfield went out against TCU, they, they had a what seemed like a comfortable lead. But, but Stryker told me that, believe it or not, the defense felt the absence of this guy, not just the offense. I, I'm telling you, I, I think Bob Stoops feels it. You know, it, it's it, they, as much as they eight and five last year to where they are right now, there are a lot of different parts that have made this a special year, but he's right in the middle of it. And you're right, the team feeds off of that because you know what? It's authentic, it's genuine. Well, a second down throw, it's incomplete. Here comes the flag. Zach Sanchez was all over Juwan Seals. Well, too much all over him. One last thing about Baker Mayfield. It doesn't hurt to have two NFL tailbacks behind you in the lineup together. <laughs> you know. Pass interference. Defense number 15. Yeah, that's a good call. Ball replaced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And Sanchez were an alpha of this secondary. Guy had a 
a pick against the Horned Frogs last game. Won't be the last pass interference we see called tonight. No. A lot of in this conference. No, and this, like we talked about a big series earlier for, for J.W. Walsh in this offense, and now after those two big runs, you, you can just feel this stadium. They, they need something positive here on this drive. It's been Walsh passing, not running, which is a complete role reversal. As soon as Brent Crusher, Walsh gets it away. It's a low throw, and McCleskey catches it at the 44-yard line. It'll be third down. I talked about second down, excuse me. Chris, I talked about two or three series ago about how this football team, Oklahoma's defense, their adjustment, and it, maybe it took them a, a little bit of a while to adjust to J.W. Walsh being in there instead of Rudolph. But they're blitzing a lot more and playing a lot more man coverage. The idea there is when you have an athletic guy in J.W. Walsh, you don't want to give him room to work. You want to try to force the issue and make him want to throw the ball and don't allow him to be able to get back there and make plays with his arm or his legs. In second and seven, they bring five again. Hit Walsh as he throws. The completion made along the sidelines there. And it seals and then move the chains. Chris, we just talked about that. Here, here comes the blitz with Stryker. The best see how he's coming late? See how he's able to do that? The athletic ability goes right by the big tackle because of his speed, but they're disguising it and bringing it late. Here they come again. Walsh flush from the pocket. Chased and just as he's going out of bounds, Stryker was in hot pursuit. He throws it away. Remember, this is an offensive line that has struggled for the, the entire year to protect the quarterback, even though Walsh is athletic. But watch Stryker not give up on this. He's right here and watch the speed. Watch the relentless attitude of not giving up on the play. Keep in mind, Walsh is an athlete. He can get away from pressure, but Eric Stryker, as a defensive and outside linebacker, he shows you what kind of speed he has. An offense that had eight net rushing yards against Baylor, the lowest total in 20 years. They have 23 so far tonight. Jeff Carr's short game. Gundy was, was telling me if he could just somehow squeeze out 100 rushing yards, so he'd feel great about that. Well, it, it's going to be tough to do, even though J.W. Walsh has an ability to, to make plays because of the way he can run. The, 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 there's a mismatch in the trenches. The Oklahoma defensive line, and you add the linebackers, what they can do to the line of scrimmage is they can push it back, and it frees the linebackers and those, those safeties to be able to come downhill against that running game. It's going to be tough. If they're going to move the ball tonight, I think it's going to be Walsh creating or making plays one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They got two backs in that blocked the blitz on third down. Sooner bring it, Walsh circles back. And has to just fire away. So the blitzes that Mike Stoops is dialing up are effective. Here it is again, and, and you know who it is. And, and these, this is what you hear coaches talk about in college football today against these spread looks. We don't have to have sacks, but we want our we want our secondary to be able to uh, the defensive line to be able to affect the quarterback. So they're affecting him means forcing him out of the pocket before he's ready to be able to make a throw, and he just has to throw it away. Boy, Stryker is having his way with his Oklahoma State offensive line and pass pro. So Siner to boot it away. The empty possession for the Cowboys increases pressure on their own defense as the Sooners go back to work from the 20 yard line up 11. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart. Brought to you by Coke Zero. All tastes, zero calories. Try a new game day tradition. Cadillac. And Jiffy Lou. Experts around every corner to help you leave worry behind. The roots of this university is Oklahoma A&M. Tremendous facilities now. Boone Pickens getting involved after a huge bedlam upset in 2001 by the Cowboys, and they backed it up with another win in 2002. And uh, Mr. Pickett said, I, I, I kind of believe in this football thing here. And next thing you know, they got a nice new stadium with his name on it. Sooners from the 20. Mayfield flips it. And off the touchdown run last time, this is Mixon getting free again. A flag comes in as Mixon makes his way across the 40. Kevin Peterson forced him out. Part of this run may come back. 
looked like a hold by the receiver downfield blocking but how about the moves again by Joe Mixon in the open field. This is 25th reception. Holding offense number five. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. We got the senior receiver Jerron Neal but Mixon and P. Ryan, but particularly Mixon can be an effective receiver out of the backfield. Absolutely. There it is right there. Ron Neal at the top there against Peterson. Clear hold right in front of the officials. So a big game comes back for OU. Still first down. Yeah, it's a spot foul, so it doesn't erase all of that game. First down and about six. Take it to P. Ryan. He may feel pump fakes and is dragged down. A short loss there. Quick penetration by Seth Jacobs. Uh, you, you talked about Mike Stoops bringing some blitzes. You've seen Oklahoma State also. They're taking some chances. Good job up front that time. You know, we've not said Emmanuel Ogba's name that much tonight, but always a factor. Has great athletic ability, but the blitz that time ends up getting home with Seth Jacobs, the junior. His first sack of the season. They lose just a yard. Mayfield pressured again. Clips it across the middle. Catch made by Shepard. He's got room and a blocker in the edge and is hammered hard at the 40 yard line by Ashton Lampkin, but a nice game. Watch the two linebackers right here. You see pressure here. And by blitzing them, look how it opens it up right over the middle. An easy throw. Baker Mayfield just kind of baiting them, bringing them towards them, and then dumping it right to Sterling Shepard. That's 17 yards on that third down play. And now P. Ryan, just his third carry. I would make a strong argument in, a, in an era where it's all about offensive receivers that Sterling Shepard could be the best receiver in the country because of everything that he does as a receiver. He's got it again, Kirk. Waits for his blocker and gets to the 45. Now, there's other guys yeah, who are flashier, maybe. But why, why do you say he's your favorite I, I, I think I think he is a professional. He, he, t he works in his craft. He's a route runner. He can do things from the slot. He can do things from the, as an outside receiver. He's played so much football. He knows how to set up defensive backs. He will be a superstar at the next level in the NFL. Yeah. Just muscles forward down inside the 40. It's another healthy first down gain of five yards. He's just one of these guys that, that takes his craft very seriously. Like he, he works, he's already had a great career, but he wants to keep raising the bar. I love to see guys that never settle. They just want to keep getting better and better and better. He never, he's never good enough in his own mind. Yeah, in the last four weeks, he has 565 receiving yards. Nobody in FBS has been more productive the last four games than Shepard has. He won incomplete far side. Neal couldn't collect it. Third down. And what's interesting is Clint Spencer has moved Kevin Peterson, number one. Again, I talked about him being one of the better corners. In the Big 12, there's Glenn Spencer. He's moved him over. He's saying, we're going to keep him on top of Sterling Shepard. He's going to kind of shadow him, follow him, no matter where he goes. Peterson said that he was looking forward to that challenge. The last completion to Shepard was the Sooners' first conversion on third down. They need five here. Cowboys bring pressure. They flip it to P. Ryan. He's got plenty of room and first down easily down inside the 30. Both backs effective receivers. Yeah, it, and I think that's what has made P. Ryan more of a complete back in Lincoln Riley's offense. You know, last year he was a true freshman, a powerful runner. Now he's blocking for Mixon. He's blocking in pass protection, catching the ball in the backfield. Does a heck of a job. Fake it to him. Flip it near side. Baxter blocked down. Terrific play by Peterson that time, and it's a loss. Yeah, he, he does a really good job here. You know, you know how it is in the Big 12 as a defensive back. You're out on an island almost the whole game. Whether you're out wide, you're in tight to the boundary, you're over the slot. Can you play out in space? Can you play on an island? And they rely on Kevin Peterson to do that. Now it is late in the year, too. He's nursing an ankle. He's not 100%. He's trying to gut it out here. Mayfield delivers far side, and it's another 
ball that Neal should have come up with. You, you bring up a good point about it being late in the year. This, this Oklahoma State defense, not just dealing with ankles and knees and, and injuries like this, a ball that Neal should have caught, but the last four games, 366 plays, 92 plays a game. They've been trying to defend the tempo of the Big 12. I don't care who you are, that will take a toll on you physically and emotionally trying to be able to stop these offenses. The paddle people there trying to make some noise, make it tough for Mayfield on this third and 12. Cowboys twist in front, but this is D.D. Westbrook, a crossing route, one of your room, two downfield blocks, and he's shut down first and goal, Oklahoma. How about the crossing route with D.D. Westbrook who gets the ball? Remember I talked about how much I love Sterling Shepard? Well, here's an unselfish attitude, and he, I may have gotten away with one. Watch him block right there. He takes out the defensive back, Ashton Lampkin, who was on him, covering him. Ball was still in the air when Shepard made that block. Got away with one there. Sinners back in the red zone, trying to really stretch this lead now. Mayfield wide open. That's too easy. Dimitri Flowers. Oklahoma just rolling now. Everything Lincoln Riley calling just about is working. When you have a play of some of these superstar players, it catches the defense's eyes. You see him come in motion. By coming in motion like that, you see the defense flows, and then it's just simple. It just goes right out there. Defense has to flow and respect Shepard coming in motion because of the speed that he has, the playmaking ability that he has. The defense flows with it, and another great call there by Lincoln Riley on first and 10 to be aggressive with a play-action pass. Well start, offense number 40. Five yards penalty will replay the try. And we kick the point after. Lincoln Riley, that 32-year-old offensive coordinator out of Mule Shoe, Texas. A guy with really an amazing brain. Total recall. One of those guys who probably could be a wizard in finance, make a billion dollars, but chooses to use it for calling football plays. He does a heck of a job. He, he did a great job last year at East Carolina with Shane Carden. Caught the attention of Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops made the move to go in and bring him in. And it has really paid off for this Sooners offense and the team. Oklahoma has run 26 plays, and they have 28 points, says Baker Mayfield. Running the ball, throwing blocks for Owen touchdowns. Boomer Sooner of 28-10. Well, Tuesday night, the new college football playoff rankings presented by AT&T will be released. We shall see if Oklahoma keeps navigating toward a win here, if the committee sees fit to change anything in the top four. Number one, Clemson winning. Alabama over Auburn today. Notre Dame and Stanford are still battling. We'll keep it posted on that one. 23-21 Irish at this point, trying to make their case. Sure are. That'd be a big win for Notre Dame. Meanwhile, Oklahoma 21 unanswered touchdowns on each of the last three possessions, and there is serious urgency now for this Cowboy offense. Hudson, the boot taken at the five by Jeff Carr. Cuts it to the left, wrestles down at the 25 yard line as we check in with that cozy truck. Our bear, Chris Felic, with the Affleck trivia question. He made it through a, a cold morning on the game day set. Yeah, bear. In, 19, in 1988, Barry Sanders had that great season, 26-28 rushing yards. Who finished second to Barry Sanders that year in Russia? Wow. Uh, he's the best player I've ever seen in college football. That's the greatest year I've ever seen as a running back. I know your affinity for that season, so I figured that might throw you a little Barry Sanders question. You may be going to ponder that, Bear. But in the meantime, there is a change in Mason Rudolph as he tried to get the straight truth from the Oklahoma State sideline and said nothing's wrong with him. Is his foot injury serious? He, he hasn't started until now, hasn't played, but now, Kirk, they got to throw the ball, they figure. And Rudolph, short completion to Glidden, who now just drops the ball. No, never had it. Never did complete the catch. Striker was in there. And now, he, look, not a great mobility from the quarterback that time, was there? No, and it looked like the ball, it, it, it kind of was moving down through his stomach, down between his legs. I, you're right. I, I think it's a great call by the official. Watch the football. It's, he never had it. Trying to wedge it between those calves there. He's doing everything he can. <laughs> I don't think that's considered control in the catch when you, when you squeeze it with the legs. So Rudolph, let's see if he can spark this team. And let's keep an eye on his mobility, because that's been the issue. 
Blake Flock at five. Sooner smelling blood. But back off, only rushing three. And almost intercepted. Zach Sanchez made a break on the ball intended for Seals. That was almost a pick six. Zach Sanchez has three interceptions since he's returned from that ankle injury in the last couple weeks. Had two last week against TCU. Does a really good job of putting his foot in the ground and reacting to the football. He is an aggressive corner, an instinctive guy that makes so many big plays for the Sooners. And to see him back healthy, Makes this defense very, very different on the back end. Let's see if they pressure Rudolph Kirk on third and ten here. And Stryker got a running start. Hoes down the pocket, hit the quarterback, and it's intercepted. Jordan Thomas with a convoy to the end zone. And the Sooners are smelling blood as Stryker hit Rudolph, and Thomas took the pick to the house. And Thomas gets the interception, but Eric Stryker gets the assist. He's been delaying these blitzes the entire first half. Here he is, waits, waits, and then gets right through Carson, the back. Goes right through and pushes him into the backfield. And I'm not, you know, Mason Rudolph gets hit as he's trying to get rid of that football. But even if he didn't, Thomas in great position all over Aitman, the receiver. See how he's waiting, comes in late. Uses his speed, goes right through Carson, pushes him right into the backfield. And there's Jordan Thomas with the ball skills, making the play and taking it to the end zone. Stryker just overpowered the back there and oh, ill-advised oh, throw, perhaps. And you know Thomas, his his fourth pick, Kirk. And how about the 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 progression from an overmatched freshman in this game a year ago, picked on by some cowboy receivers? That's got to feel pretty sweet for a guy from Line, Texas. I, I think the entire difference in this defense. From what I've seen from where they were a year ago to this year is just a, a year a little bit wiser older more mature on the back end with guys like what we've seen from Parker and Thomas of course Sanchez Ahmad Thomas And missed the point really talented group in the back to the point one of the few things that's not going right for the Sooners at the moment 27 unanswered now Before something else happens here, better get back to the bear to answer our <laughs> Affleck trivia question. I like the question. Barry Sanders' monster year in '88. You have any guess? Who was second in rushing? I was wondering if he's going to go from a sooner, maybe if there's a tie into this game. But I, I guess that. Oh. Okay. It is Darren, Darren Lewis, Lewis of Texas A&M, and the irony: two years later, Lewis led the nation in rushing at Oklahoma State's Gerald Hudson. Was second to Lewis, so this Lewis, is Flick, he, had a, he had a great year. He a thousand yards short. The Barry Sanders. Exactly. That, that's what I call a runaway rushing title. You said forever. He, he's your favorite college yes. player, right? Well, he's the best that best I've ever player seen. You've ever seen. I thought for the question. We thank you, Mr. Felica. Look, I've taken at the goal line here. James Washington, the star receiver, not one of the normal returners, but they're trying to get anything, a spark going. And after Rudolph came in and threw three incompletions in the pick six, looks like he's not the quarterback. And Gummy's going to go back to walk, but I got it. Be honest, Kirk. I'm a little confused. I don't know if you are the way the quarterbacks oh, have been yeah. used here so far. Well, I mean, again, for people that aren't familiar with Oklahoma State, Mason Rudolph, number two, is their starting quarterback. He's going for over 3,500 yards. They they run an offense where they spread you out and throw the ball a lot. And J.W. Walsh has been kind of the changeup. You have two different offensive systems that makes it really tough on defenses these last five weeks to stop them because you can throw it with Rudolph and run it with Walsh. And tonight, for the most part, other than the last series, it's been all J.W. Walsh. Walsh now back in. Loops it downfield for Washington. Under throw. He comes back and makes the catch. D.B. falls down. And it's the Parks with a quick strike touchdown and cut into the lead. 72 yards. Remember we talked about the man-to-man -man matchups, the one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, whether you play in man or zone. Who will win those battles? We just saw an interception by Jordan Thomas for a pick six. And here on an underthrown ball, Sanchez does not see the football. And the big fella, James Washington, comes back and makes a play on the football. Washington's 10th touchdown reception. The guy with tremendous vertical leap, acceleration, 
a guy that Uvendi said he used to be satisfied with like a catch. It was 20 yards, maybe go down. Now it's all about yards after the catch yeah. for this guy. Yeah. Man free coverage, meaning Sanchez is alone with Washington. By the time he recognizes and sees the football, it's too late. Adjust back to the ball. A little push to push him on, but coming back to the ball. And not only that, the safety in the middle of the field, Thomas, who's supposed to be kind of playing center field, so if a play is made, he's got to make the tackle right there. But give Washington credit for coming back to the ball and then the speed to be able to get to the house. It's like Bob Soups is over there speaking to the official feeling that was maybe uh, worthy of an offensive pass interference there in Washington. If you look at Walsh's stats, Kirk, throwing the ball, 14 of 20. So almost as many attempts here in the first half as he had all season long. 205 and two touchdowns. But you're still behind by 17. Yeah, and again, even though he's known as a runner, he can throw it. We've seen that earlier in his career. But because of how they struggled all year on the offensive line when it comes to running the football, you just knew when it was Rudolph or it's Walsh, if they're going to stay in this game, if they're going to be competitive, their talented group of wide receivers led by James Washington and David Bliss, they're going to have to make plays in one-on-one -on -one opportunities. That's exactly what Washington did right there. They're not going to be able to run the ball much at all. They've run for 23 yards tonight. Perhaps the bigger concern for the Cowboys is Oklahoma's offense is rolling and, and moving the ball and will. Again, 26 plays. That's all they've run so far. It's a low total for them. 11 but, yards a play. Yeah, but 34 points. <laughs> this is Ross. Fields him on the bounce. And Ross will have the big 90 yard return to set up a touchdown, knocked across the 35. So Baker Mayfield, who comes from Austin, has a girlfriend who's a former soccer player here at Oklahoma State, Bailey Burmaster, the senior who is a defender here. So she's going to cheer for her boyfriend, but she's a true Oklahoma State fan through and through, sitting at the 50 yard line tonight here, surrounded by Cowboys fans. Happy for her guy, but not for her team. So conflicted tonight. So she looks bored with the whole situation. I mean, <laughs> cold, yawning. She's ready to call tonight. They're both, they're both from Austin, actually. Uh, turns out her parents live just down the street from Mayfield, Lake Travis area. It's Pirine behind the quarterback. They fake it to him. Mayfield with a pump fake. No pump fake. Still kept the ball. And he shows his elusiveness. He, maybe not the most explosive guy, but he's got a way of kind of moving his hips and avoiding the tackles. Oh, abs he? Absolutely. He, he is very, very tough for a linebacker or for any of these defensive linemen that are getting into the backfield. You got it's one thing to get there, you got to try to corral him. Try to corral P line if you can. First down carry for four yards. Ogba knocked him down. A couple of guys are going to be playing on Sunday for a long time colliding there. His name much so far in the first half, though, have we? Be right again. Cross midfield. It'll be third and four. You know, with, with Baker Mayfield and, and that athletic ability, like any quarterback who can create, there's a fine line between creating too much and, and being a guy that's being going to be asked to, hey, you need to calm down a little bit and, and you know, stay within the confines of the offense, be smart, execute. You want him to be free willing. You just want him to do it when it makes sense. You don't want him to do it every single time he's back there. Mix in motion to the slot. Five receivers empty backfield on third and three. Mayfield steps up, takes off, first down. Shaken and bacon to the Cowboys 40. Yeah, I mean, he, he's almost like a point guard when he gets out there who's got a great handle and you're trying to stay with him. He, he does a really good job of just, a, it's, it's kind of a herky jerky movement, and that's what makes it so tough for an oncoming linebacker in the open field. So it's one thing to cover down Sterling Shepard and the receivers, it's another thing to be able to deal with him when he has that ball in his hands. I love the analogy at the point guard breaking down off the dribble and he can shoot it too. <laughs> <It's your Thomas. laughs> P. Ryan again. Ooh, almost a huge play coming across to just grab him with Seth Jacobs to prevent another big game. What I love about this offense is they'll stretch you out with the, with these great group of wide receivers, which was different than a year ago. All they really had was Shepard, but they've got a good group, and then they can attack into the middle with their running game. There's one to the edge to Shepard. 
Neal throws a block, and Shepard's down inside the 25 first down. Yeah, that, that's just good recognition by the quarterback. He sees the soft coverage and just pulls the ball and, and gets it out. That was a run-pass option, meaning he could hand the ball off to T. Ryan. He had two linemen pulling for the run play, but he saw that he had the matchup he wanted and just fired it up to the, up to the top and picked up the first down. T. Ryan. The right side bounces off a tackle like he does. Still going into the end zone. Touchdown, Piran. <laughs> 25 yards, most of it after contact. This is how Piran does it. Yeah, he, he went right through the middle linebacker, Chad Whitener, the sophomore who has stepped in this year for Ryan Simmons, one of the leaders of this team. Whitener just got a, as a young player, and he's been playing against a lot of backs this year, stepping in for Simmons, but he's never seen anybody like Samaje Piran and the physicality of Piran and what he can do running the ball. No drama on that PAT from Seibert, and Oklahoma continues to be frighteningly efficient on offense. 33 plays, now 41 points. Yeah, watch him run right through the middle linebacker right there. And then the safety takes a poor angle. Yeah, you, you want to keep a track. We talked about before the game, yards after contact with Samaj P. Ryan because he gets through linebackers. Safeties aren't real sure if they want to take him on head-to-head, -head, so they may come in at a different angle. He is such an impressive back, and here's the pylon cam showing you that he gets into that end zone. But that drive was really Oklahoma. You, you had the quick stuff to the outside, the Shepard. you got to respect that, so you've got to get your numbers right out on Shepard, and then you left yourself short into the inside. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna run the football because you're short at the inside, so it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a, a, a back and forth game between the offense and the defense, and Oklahoma has had the upper hand with the effective uh, balance of this offense. They had the crap ball against Texas, but since that game, they're averaging more than 600 yards and 51 points. Is there a defensive coordinator in the country right now? And I'll include Kirby Smart saving anybody because they could be tracking. Long way to go. They could be tracking though toward a semifinal. Who wants to see this offense across the field right now? I, I personally wouldn't mind seeing them <laughs> play against the front seven from Alabama. That, that might be kind of fun to watch. Well, I, I don't mean us. I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't think there's opponent? anybody that wants to see them right now. No. This is Washington again. Because this is way and is knocked out at the 25. We'll get back to that. Then you're looking ahead, perhaps, but first to Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Chris. Let's take a look at who's getting it done, presented by Wells Fargo. And on third and one, Ramon Wright with a plunge over the top. The Cardinals scoring on all four of their trips to the red zone. They retake the lead. They're up 28-23 in the third. Chris, Herbie, back to you. Cassidy, thanks. Good one in Palo Alto. And here, the Sooners saying we don't care what Notre Dame does. We don't care about the resume. We're going to make our own statement tonight. They're closing argument to that playoff committee. And they're up 41-17. 4-0-7 until halftime. Taylor, short game. Yeah, th what I was going to say is no matter who matches up with Oklahoma, the, the thing you have to deal with is they, they have it all. You have a quarterback right now playing with confidence that can run and can throw. They're going to stretch you out with formations, and they have a great group of receivers. And then you have two NFL running backs. They can run, they can throw, and you got a quarterback not turning the ball over, only five interceptions on the year. That, that's a lot to deal with. Walsh on second down, takes a shot again, throws it into coverage, and it's intercepted again by Jordan Thomas. Went to the house already. Space on the sideline. And dropped at the 30. So desperation for Walsh. Another takeaway. And this thing is really fitting to get ugly. Now, we, we talked about one-on-one. -on -one. This is just a great technician. And Jordan Thomas. Chris, you talked about last year as a freshman, he was picked on. Boy, he has come a long way. Is long and athletic, but now experienced. Great body position. There's no way that Seals can get inside there and get to the football because of the way Thomas positioned himself. And look at this. J.W. Walsh play action and just throws it up. Hopes that his guy can make a play on the ball, but he was thrown to the inside and made it very easy for Thomas to use his body to shield the receiver from getting to the football. Excellent play again by Jordan Thomas. 
He's picked off each quarterback. That's the first pick of the year for Walsh. And now Mayfield and the Sooners really smelling blood, trying to put this one away before halftime, perhaps. P. Ryan again. Gundy's team has lived off takeaways and points off turnovers. Nobody better in the country. At home, the points off turnover edge for Oak State coming in was 80 to 7. He felt he needed to be plus two, plus three in this game. And, and instead, they've thrown a couple picks. That's a great point, Chris. They're plus 15 on the year. Second in the country coming in to tonight and, and felt that they had to win that aspect. And tonight, so far, minus two. And one of them, a pick six. Yeah, not just the takeaways, but how they cash them in yeah. so quickly. So Mayfield escapes again. Still running. Look at this guy. Finally knocked down hard, but Mayfield showing his, his elusiveness again. Yeah, and, and he, he actually had Mark Andrews to the left for a touchdown. See number 81? But because he had pressure and he had to start to create, if he would have been given maybe just another second, maybe half of a second, the young freshman was breaking free to the middle on a post for a touchdown. And that, by the way, is exactly who he's looking at. But Oklahoma State got to him just in time. What do you do on the third and fourth? You watch B Ryan, you watch Mixon, the quarterback run, Shepard. I mean, pick your poison. Good luck. That would bring some pressure. It's Mixon on the handoff, just brought down as he was bursting free. Seth Jacobs saved the touchdown, and it's fourth down. They continue to blitz. That, that, that Glenn Spencer give him a lot of credit. They're down 41 to 17, but they are not losing their aggressive mentality. They have been blitzing those linebackers all night. And sometimes it's worked out, and other times they've, they've paid for that risky mentality. But they've not let off of that, that aggressive approach. Duke says forget about a field goal attempt of 41 17. They need three on fourth down. Play clock at seven. They're not going to get a playoff. They're going to have to spend a timeout here. But this is a, a performance that's, that's something to behold from Texas or from, from Oklahoma since that loss to yeah. Texas. It's, it's really been tremendous. I mean, it's been a defense that, as you pointed out, is so improved. From a year ago and an offense that, that right now is clicking with a play caller that's in in rhythm i mean this football team as we get to this weekend and next weekend the final time we'll have a chance to see all these teams you, you know you, you you start to say who are the top four who has the best resume who are the top four and this is one game where oklahoma oklahoma at this point has made a very very strong statement to the committee and evaluating this football team on both sides of the ball. That's what makes Oklahoma so dangerous. It's not just the offense of Baker Mayfield. The defense and how much they've improved on that side of the ball makes them a complete team. And you throw in special teams as well. Talk about teams who want to uh, be judged on what they do when they're at their best, when they win, and not on the quality of the loss, which I think too many people focus on. Yes, Texas is not a quality loss for a playoff contending team, but how good are they? when they're at their high note, at their best. I think, I think we're seeing it. And after the timeout, they are going to trot out Austin Seibert, the freshman kicker, for a 40-yarder. Missed earlier from 47. It's a better hold this time. Laces are spun away. And this one is knocked through by Seibert. 44-17, minute 14 before halftime. Cassidy? Thanks, Chris. Back and forth between Notre Dame and Stanford. Josh Adams, the freshman, just explodes for a 62-yard touchdown. They couldn't convert the two-point conversion, so it's 29-28 Notre Dame with under four to play in the third. Back to you guys. Uh, thanks. No C.J. Procise in the game. They just go to Josh Adams for a big run as the Irish continue to try to overcome injuries yeah, they have done that as much as anybody the freshman now stepping in for pro size who's meant so much to that offense john saunders mark may mac brown will break that one down for you the capital one halftime report is coming up as oklahoma builds their lead we're going to get the ball to begin the second half to so the cowboys in this big 12 where it is so tough to to break serve to get stops only a minute 14 for Walsh Kirk but you just feel like they got to try to do something here and they've got a couple timeouts 30 point second quarter for the Sooners 
and it'll be a touchback. Remember, they scored it in just a play when they got the ball up a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to James Washington, made a play against Zach Sanchez. So, see what they decide to do. Have to see the, the pick six from Jordan Thomas as part of it. You don't see teams with more points than plays run. That, that, that's that's scary good. Thomas up there saying, throw my, I'll go for the hat trick in the first half. Throw it my way again. Take a, you take a hostile crowd, and it, it's a hostile crowd here for Bedlam. You take them right out of this game with a quarter like that. This striker right here, remember the delay blitz. Yep, good spot. Now he'll back the way into coverage. Walsh drops the ball, picks his way up the middle, just dropped the ball. Looks like they have recovered it. Yeah, I don't know if he, Jesse Robinson, the right guard. I don't know if he accidentally hit the ball as he was running. See 64 there. I don't know if he, he may have accidentally. <laughs> the the offensive line butt fumble. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a uh, ball off the hands, and you just got to make every play if you're Oklahoma State at this point. Washington couldn't can grab it. Yeah, that, that ball is a little bit high, and it's a play that James Washington is one of their top receivers knows that he's open he's got to be able to make that play he's able to get some separation from Zach Sanchez and the timing was good he just unable to hold on to the ball well to kind of keep any hope of doing something on this drive they've got to convert to third and five striker creeping up again Walsh gets the ball out it's complete to Glidden who does get a first down to the 44 with 43 seconds left Glidden has had a very, very quiet night. In fact, that, that may be his first catch of the night. Yeah, he's came in with 50 catches, the most productive receiver. Walsh to Glidden again. Bobbled that one, just collected it before going out of bounds at the 46. Oklahoma's sitting back, and Walsh is just kind of taking the soft coverage and saying, you know, we'll... We'll take some some yards. We'll take five, six, seven, eight, ten yards at a time here. If you're going to sit back and in softer man coverage. Anyone's tipped to the line of scrimmage. Striker, an active guy in the first half, got a hand on it. Striker is one of the more interesting players in college football. He he has been known as a pass rusher. Here he's athletic, times it up perfectly. He's really built like a nickelback, and I think that's what he's grown into is the versatility to be able to play out in space, play man, but we know him as a pass rusher because of that Sugar Bowl against Alabama and A.J. McCarron. He thinks he's going to be a pass rusher at the next level. Certainly a, a versatile athlete who's clearly great in space, too. Here he comes again. Running start in the face of the quarterback, Walsh. Had to sidestep it, but that striker just blowing the play up again. Yes. And, and that's what really makes him unique is his, the way he's able to time this up. So he, 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 he the right tackle here, Crabtree, doesn't have a chance, not only because he's so quick, but because how he's he's a step or two ahead of the lineman before he gets out of his stance. It's fourth down. You know what he told me he loves to do? He loves to watch those wildlife films where the cheetah is running down the gazelle. He thinks of himself as a cheetah, like with with great speed pursuing He's been a cheetah in his first half. <laughs> I, mean, I can see that. So I've got a chance to see that in person. It's exciting, and he, he says he hopes he get a chance to to go on a safari someday because he kind of sees himself as a, a a predatory cat. Hey, in the career that he's had in Norman, watch the, the first half that he's had. He's been all over the place, relentless attitude. You could tell as a guy who's played a lot of football how focused he has been. He's been delaying that same blitz all night long where he's at the second level and just before the snap he cheats up and here Thomas with the interception, but he forced the back, Carson back into the quarterback, Rudolph at the time for the interception. But, talking there to Charles Tapper between Tapper 91 and striker 19 Oklahoma's in great hands as far as leadership and guys that can get after the quarterback striker definitely a vocal leader part of that group that said never again after they lost to Oklahoma State and then got embarrassed in the Russell Athletic Bowl beaten 
like Clemson 40 to 6 the leaders of this team got together at the end of the season and rededicated themselves very rough offseason for Bob Soups he got further galvanized when a racist video was distributed by a fraternity in Oklahoma that the team bonded together grew closer together by how they protested that and Stryker was at the forefront of that Cowboys have converted every fourth down attempt this season so far seven for seven make it eight for eight as Washington is wrestled down near the 30 with 22 seconds left by picking him by picking up striker that time it gives JW Walsh throwing to Washington again soft coverage by Sanchez just give Walsh a little bit of time and Washington has some room there look at the bottom he's got that soft coverage again at the bottom Walsh with another completion. That's Glidden, his third on the drive, driven out. So 17 seconds as the Cowboys have put themselves in a position to get something out of this possession. Yeah, and, and, and if you're Mike Stoops and Bob Stoops and the defensive staff, they're saying, hey, let's not give them an easy one like we did earlier to Washington. Let's keep everything in front. Let's give them those 8 to 10-yard throws. Let's let that clock kind of work itself down. We just don't want to give up the quick home run, the quick touchdown. Now strikers at the top. Backs out now as Walsh from the pocket looks for Glidden in the end zone. It's overthrown. The 29th pass attempt for Walsh in this first half, matching his season total yeah. coming in. Yeah. A guy that is known, again, we, we talked all night long. It, he's had a, a career where he's played a lot of football, but this year has been regulated more to a short yardage and red zone quarterback. A good change up to Mason Rudolph, but with Rudolph. Un unable to go tonight. He's had to kind of carry the load. You're right, 29 attempts. Well, the arm was fresh coming in, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's had a whole season to be ready for tonight, throwing it around. 32 with 11 seconds. Walsh steps up. And they move the chains. He gets down into the red zone, but just five seconds, four, and they'll spend the timeout. Yeah, use their last timeout, try to get some points on the board. So they're able to move the ball down the field. Started at their own 25. And they moved at 56 methodically in 10 plays. And they'll send out Ben Grogan. Try to cut this to a 24 point halftime deficit. Grogan, one of one so far tonight after not having made a field goal in the previous five games. They've been so good in the red zone. They really haven't needed him much. You know, over their last five games, they had, they've had 23 opportunities down in the red zone and 21 touchdowns. We're talking about 91% of the time, J.W. Walsh leading most of those drives in that area. So he really hasn't been needed that much in the last five games. Logan Little used, but very solid inside of 40. 8 of 10. He's from 36. timeout taken by the Sooners not so much maybe to ice but just to be on the lookout for a fake maybe no, I think he's I think he's uh, Bob Stoops just is icing him ice over about there. 27 here <laughs> okay if you say so Bob 11 deer sponsoring the good hands field goal nets from all state making contributions to university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicks Today, Allstate has contributed millions in funds. The Cowboys have been a great third quarter team and a great fourth quarter team. Big edges over their opponents in both quarters in the second half, but they have a whole lot of work to do. This would help a little bit, I suppose, if maybe psychologically. Then they got to go about getting a stop when the Sooners get the ball to begin the third quarter. So Grogan from 36 yards. Does cut the deficit to 24 after a tremendous first 30 minutes for the Oklahoma Sooners in 359 yards. Defense gets a touchdown. Mayfield throws for a couple. P. Ryan and Mixon of each run for one. And Thomas with Bob Stoops. 
Bob, with the exception of giving up those points on the last drive. Commanding lead, what pleased you most? Yeah, um, you know, everything's been solid. Uh, run game, pass game offensively, taking care of the ball. Had some big runs by Samaj and Joe. And defensively, really, there's two jump balls that, that were there, didn't make a good play on it. Message to your team to stay aggressive. How do you do oh, that? Absolutely. Ahead? I mean, we, we've got to continue to play. Uh, Heather? Tom, thanks so much. Coach, your regular starter, Mason Rudolph, sat for all but one series. What can you tell us about his status and how you'll use your quarterback in the second half? Well, we didn't really like the way he felt. He didn't say he didn't really feel very good, so we got to go with JW. Before the game, you told me the importance of the running game. How do you ignite that with JW in the second half? Well, we got to try to stay with the game plan. You know, they're, they, uh, they've got us with some big plays here in the first half. We got to tackle better and then stay with the game plan on offense. Mike, thanks so much for your time. Chris, back up to you. Heather, thank you, Tom. Minus two in the turnover department and minus 24 on the scoreboard. Capital One halftime report coming up from the studio. Rivalry series. Sooners up 24. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Walmart. Part of ESPN's rivalry series presented by Jiffy Lou. Chris Fowler back with Kirk Herbstreit. We just saw the Oklahoma coaches in the hallway. Mike Stoops with his folder. Still head down, focused, a job to do. If you're yeah. telling your guys at halftime, look, this is Bedlam. Long history of crazy stuff. And Oklahoma State, remember, is the only team in the country that's three times come from 15 plus points down to win. Now it's a it's a tall order, but they've done it before. Well, they've been down most of the year. In fact, five of their ten wins, they've had to come back in the second half. It's a different, little bit of a different feel for what they're facing, the team that they're facing, and also being down by 24. Big time. Alex Ross, who sparked the Sooners early with a 90-yard kickoff return, brings this back to the 26 as we check out the Pacific Life game summary in this big play Oklahoma offense. Yeah, that's exactly right, Chris. It started early with a touchdown pass to Sterling Shepard. Baker Mayfield, I think, feeling really good with what he needs to do, but really the big playability in the backfield. Samaji Piran with some big runs. Also saw Joe Mixon get in on the act. And also the defense with a pick six. Gordon Thomas, the pressure from Eric Stryker, takes it all the way back for a touchdown and the Sooners really a big first half on the road here in Stillwater. See how aggressively Lincoln Riley continues to call these plays. And hand it off to Piran. Short gain there. Piran with a 68 yard jaunt on his second carry. Closing in on 3,000 career yards. In fact, he's five yards away, Piran, from getting to 3,000 in his first couple seasons, something that Adrian Peterson was able to do here yeah. in Oklahoma. There are some great running backs this year in college football, and Scott J. P. Ryan is right in that mix with the best of the best. He's got it again. P. Ryan cuts back and is wrestled down. This really has been the year of the running back in the beginning of the season. So much of the focus was on the four net. Perhaps Derrick Henry of Alabama, but he run belongs in there with, with Zeke Ali, all the other guys. And you can see five yards away from the 3K in two seasons and a chance to even surpass Adrian's, uh, Peterson's 3,029. Just, just to be on the same panel with Adrian Peterson, pretty remarkable accomplishment. Here's a third and eight. And Mayfield straight back delivers a strike, but it's dropped. And it's Shepard, the normally reliable receiver in front of Kevin Peterson and the Sooners go three and out. Yeah, you're right. This is not something we're used to seeing. Yeah, that's the matchup we look forward to all week. Peterson against Shepard. The ball's underthrown just a bit, but with Shepard, his hands and how dependable he is, that's a catch he makes almost every single time. So Oklahoma State, they get a three and out, they get the football to their offense. Kleski makes the fair catch at the 26, and you heard before halftime Gundy telling Heather Cox they didn't feel like 
he wasn't specific, but he didn't feel like Rudolph felt right and was good to go again with the, the foot problem of the Baylor game. And Chris, not only does Mike Gundy lose Mason Rudolph, who's thrown for over 3,500 yards, but, but as we've seen in the second half of the season, the combination of Rudolph taking maybe 80% of the snaps and the way they throw the ball over the place, and then when J.W. Walsh comes in, it's just kind of a change of pace. It, it was, it's been very effective, and now it's just J.W. Walsh and just tendencies with him at quarterback. And Oklahoma, I thought, settled in and started to figure out the attack with what they're trying to do with Walsh. Walsh just takes off and darts ahead across the 35 for a nine-yard gain. And by the way, they're, they're playing with a lot of urgency and tempo here. Yeah, they need to. And, and you know, that, that, that's really what he's known for is his ability to make plays with his legs. He's been asked to throw the ball. Chris, you made a, a, a great point earlier. He came in tonight, 29 attempts on the year, 29 attempts in the first half. So in the first half, he matched his total for the whole year. Childs, oh, he tried to bounce it, went backwards, and is slammed down by Devontae Bond, backup linebacker. Well, Devontae Bond plays behind Eric Stryker and sometimes opposite of him the way he does here, but he and Tapper both just a really nice job of getting off blocks and holding their point. With Mike Stoops and any coach, it's all about being being uh, able to control your gap. That time, it's exactly what the bigger Bond and Charles Tapper were able to do on that right side. Cowboys just three of 10 on the third down in the first half. Need three, here comes pressure again, striker again. Hits Walsh as he throws, but he gets it away. First down catch is made in front of Zach Sanchez there by Washington. Saleco, the left tackle, 73, is, is going to be seeing 19 in his in his nightmares after this game. He is such quickness, suddenness to get around him. But how about J.W. Walsh being able to hold on to that ball just long enough to be able to get the ball out to Washington again? Big cushion there on third down. Washington just got underneath that for the first down. He's a first down handoff. Carson, a short game. 108 pound difference between tackle and rush in there. Seleko and Stryker, and about a 100% difference in quickness. I mean, when you think about great outside linebacker, defensive end type of guys who rush the, the quarterback in college football, I mean, you're looking at a guy that you know, a lot of times is 245, 255, maybe 260 pounds. Eric Stryker does it just with raw speed and athletic ability and that relentless attitude that he plays with. They got two guys to Stryker's side. They pick it up, and now the ball caught downfield by Seals in front of Sanchez, who got beaten on the play. The Cowboys are in business. Zach Sanchez is probably the top corner on this defense, but he's really struggling at times here tonight. He, J.W. Walsh, it's ironic. I think they maybe felt they can't they would come into this game. And a striker again. This time it's the big tight end that holds him out. I think they felt they might want to try to go after Thomas Seven, but they've been having more success going on the other side against the veteran Zach Sanchez. Carson breaks free. Good strong run down into the red zone. Another first down for Oklahoma State. So they get the three and out. And now threatening, which is pretty much what they had to have happen to make this a game. Yeah, absolutely. And he shows nice patience there on a zone play. Just kind of waits for that crease to open up and then accelerates through that for the first down. You're not going to see many openings for this running game. That time they were able to capitalize. Carson again hit immediately that time. Stephen Parker from his safety position. Ball came out there now. Flag. Oklahoma pointing their way like they have it. Officials will sort this out. I think Eric Stryker looked like he was involved after the whistle. I don't know if that was personal foul or what, but he's trying to fight for the football the well after on the, the field whistle. Is that the runner was down prior to the fumble during the run? Personal foul. Face mask, defense number 19. It'll be half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So we'll check and see if, in fact, it was a, a fumble, but the call stands. Stryker has moved the Cowboys inside the 10-yard line. Another look. Uh, look. I mean, look at that. And Eric Stryker's 
definitely got a hold of him. He's down. He's still going for that football, but his left hand has a hold of his face mask. Definitely down. Yeah. Well yeah. before the ball is whipped out. Cowboys, the first and goal at the eight. In motion Carson. Walsh keeps it the other way and bangs down inside the five. Whatever Mike Gundy said to his team, it definitely gave them a belief that they could come back into this football game and, and try to get a stop with Oklahoma getting the ball to start the second half and move down the length of the field and get some points on the board. You get it to 44 to 20, 27, and all of a sudden that sideline starts to believe a little bit. Remember, familiar territory for the Cowboys all year. They've had to fight from behind. And as you said, the opponent is tougher. The yep. deficit a little bit bigger, but this yep. is a... Great start for Oklahoma State. Second and goal. Walsh with blockers, but a lot of traffic. Just nowhere to go. Jordan Evans clogged it up. And it'll be third down. He'll lose a yard. Yeah, Jordan Evans did a really good job along with the rest of the Sooners there. Another play by Devontae Bond, but it was Evans in the middle flowing. Nobody under the, the linemen were able to get up to him. We call it third and goal here. Do you, do you, do you, I must watch it throw it in the end zone. Yes. I, I, with his athletic ability, I try to get him on the edge with an ability to run and throw, kind of the option to do one or the other. Walsh from the pocket, batted down. Devontae Bond is in a terrific series here. Broke the pass up. Now it's fourth down. Yeah, he suddenly got broken. Yeah, he, he went to Brandon Shepard, left one-on-one -on -one against Thomas. And he might have had a chance there, but instead it's the athletic bond that goes up and knocks that ball away. If he doesn't make that play, that ball gets through. And I think Shepard got separation that time from Thomas. He probably had a touchdown. Change in fortunes in the last couple of plays as Gundy elects to try to cut this to a 21-point deficit. Rogan two for two tonight. It's a chip shot. So Oklahoma State pecking away, but after a 70-yard drive, not what they wanted. Curtis, and the All-State bus will shepherd us down the road after this ball game. You can enter the All-State. It's good sweepstakes. Chance to win 100,000 bucks plus a VIP trip to the All-State Sugar Bowl and the national championship game out in Arizona, as well as weekly prizes. Interesting that Gundy chose the short field goal instead of going for it from about four yards away, trying to further cut into the lead. It's still 21 for the Sooners. A lot of faith in his defense showing that. Up to three and out, they produce to begin the quarter. And Rogan is Ross back to the three. Alex Ross. Takes a couple tackles, approaches the 30s. We check back in with Cassidy. Quite a brewing, quite an ending brewing between the Irish and the Cardinal. Deshaun Kaiser in for the touchdown, ties it up. It's under review with under 30 seconds to go. Tied at 35. We'll keep you updated. Chris and Herbie, back to you. Cassidy, thank you. So up the TD stand, the PAT. Essentially decided in the final minute. That's a gritty effort by Notre Dame. Minus Pro Slice and so many other guys. Incredible. What a Palo Alto. Yeah, that, that, if they're able to hold on, that would be a great win. Mayfield trying to get the offense back on track after the three and out. Delivers a strike across the middle. And the catch made by Shepard, first down at the 45. Again, remember we talked about the versatility of Shepard. Watch him move in from the right, over the middle, right over top of the linebacker, and a really good throw. It was actually a safety Stearns. A great throw. Nice job sitting in the pocket, though. Had the drop in the last series, but he has six catches tonight. And the short touchdown from Mayfield early. The versatility is when you can beat man coverage the way Shepard can. And then the recognition of zone and where that soft spot is in the zone coverage the way he did right there. Oh, Pirine is down on the field for the Sooners. Couldn't see what happened to him. Carried the ball and uh, was, was tackled roughly in there. They're looking at that 
Same leg. ankle that's been bothering him. Vincent Taylor looks like brought him down. And another one of those situations where his leg looked like it got caught underneath Taylor when he brought him down. Let's take a break. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart. Stop by a store or visit us at walmart.com to share wonder every day. The 2016 Ford Explorer. Be unstoppable. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Pylon cam view of Oklahoma's big place tonight. Samaji Pirine did sort of hobble off on his own trainers huddling around him. He had a left ankle problem last game. Let's focus on that, that lower leg right there. Did not look good as he was brought down in that last carry. And with this big a lead, you, you just want to, no even if he feels like last week he went out and came back, you'd like to just see him be able to just take the rest of the night off. Mayfield flips it to Shepard and gets a block on the edge and darts out first down inside the 45 to Tom. Clearly in a lot of pain down here for right in front of him. He came and slammed the helmet down in frustration. As you said, it's that left ankle, which was already heavily taped. The problem that occurred last week. Still in a lot of pain. Medical staff around him right now, pounding the bench right now in frustration as much as physical pain is Piran. Thank you, Tom. He's a guy with a high pain threshold, Piran. And again, the same ankle bothering him. The good news is that the Sooners stay on track here and win the game. They wouldn't play until New Year's Eve. The semifinals are New Year's Eve. So almost five weeks for all these guys to recover and get healthier. Meanwhile, Mixon made a nice first down game. And Shepard is knocked down after only a yard on that catch by Jordan Burton. It'll be third and short. These last six weeks for this uh, OU offense, you know, P. Ryan and Mixon and Mayfield and Sterling Shepard get most of the attention, but I really think Drew Samaya is being moved into right tackle, the true freshman. The offensive line is also really settled in to become really become a strength for this offense. They got outplayed that afternoon against Texas. That has not been the case the last six or seven weeks. It's Mixon. Didn't need much, it didn't get much. Where they're spotting it, and it's gonna be fourth and about a yard. Monte Mile walking in the middle. Also a nice job with those linebackers, still bringing them quite a bit with the pressure. That time they kind of crossed, created a little bit of confusion and doubt. And it happened so quickly, the middle of that offensive line, unable to get up and make a block on the linebackers. See what they call him. They need a full yard, and again, it's Mixon, not Piran. Play clock winding down. Mayfield rolls out and has a lot of room. Baker Mayfield. Down inside the 10. Quarterback making all kinds of plays, and he comes up limping at the end, nursing that ankle as he gets back to the huddle. But a great call. Watch Flowers right here just collapse down. Most of the defense came down worried about there either being an inside run or maybe a quarterback sneak. And here at the end of this play, well, he got caught up there with Flowers chasing him or what? Remember, they had to take him off the field last week because of the head injury. But 27 yards on that fourth down scramble. He does not want to come out of the game. You can, you can see that. Mixon. Hesitation, but still powers for, for about three. Mayfield had to sit out all of last season. It, it, it takes a lot to get him off the field. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Uh, especially at this point in the game and at this point in the season. I mean, you're at 44 to 23. It's good, really good to see Piran over there running. Even if you don't, you need to use him the rest of the tonight. The fact he's over there running is a good sign for the postseason sure is. Meanwhile, Mayfield's got it rolling out and just nowhere to throw. Lobs it into the crowd there. Agba was pressuring him. Third down. But you're right about Baker Mayfield not wanting to come off the field. I mean, he didn't like, like anybody, but especially him, 
especially after everything that he's been through as an individual throughout his career and have this team so close on the brink of a Big 12 championship after Bob Stoops and his Sooners were eight and five just frustrated closing in and that right Big 12 championship and to add to a 21 point lead on third down play clock one down at one Mayfield didn't spot it, but Bob Stoops did. We'll step away. It's time out. Cassidy Hubbard for the Air Studio Update. Stanford down one with 30 seconds to go. And Conrad Ukrafina gives Stanford the 38-36 win. They marched down the field. They had all their timeouts to set up that 45-yarder. Chris Hervey, back to you. Cassidy, thank you. Hogan, a terrific game for the Cardinal. That last drive aided by a hands-to-the-face penalty against the Irish. What a heartbreaker for Notre Dame. And you could scratch the Irish from the list of playoff contenders. What a this great kick loss. Cassidy has. Sitting back, doing all these great Deep. updates, watching all those games. Doing a great job of the updates. There is. Oklahoma now on third down. Mayfield hesitated briefly, breaks away, and scores. to deny Baker Mayfield. Limping around, stays in there and scores. Yeah, and they brought a blitz from out here with Burton. He almost comes up with a big play. They took a chance by him stepping up right there. Once he stepped up, he had the speed and the awareness to get it to the corner. There's a great look at it right there. Jordan Burton, the junior college transfer, came so close to making that play in the backfield, but Great awareness by Baker Mayfield, and he puts more points up on the board. I think that quarterback actually enjoyed the big hit from Whitener at the end of the play. Yeah, they made it right. better for him. Yeah. <laughs> Throw for two, run for one. Another reminder to get you ready for week 12 tomorrow on ESPN. The Insider is at 10 o'clock Eastern time. And then Sunday countdown. Josh Norman and Thomas Davis of Panthers joining the gang as guests. It's over on ESPN, also live on the Watch ESPN app. Baker Mayfield. In his final game this season, certainly getting consideration from the Heisman voters, and they'll have to remember this performance when they fill out their ballots, and then he'll have to hope that he appears on enough of the balance to become at least a finalist, if not the winner of the trophy. And he said it would be a very cool experience just to be considered. He, he, he begin to weigh the different quarterback circle. And we'll talk more about it as the second half unfolds. Very different kinds of players. Mayfield bringing a lot of intangibles to go with the arm and the running ability. This is Juwan Seals now back returning this kick for the Cowboys. And he is spun down, knocked down at the 28. This is the statistical part of it. If you look at Mayfield versus the recent Heisman winning quarterbacks, his completion percentage as good as just about any of them. Passing yards, very comparable total touchdowns right there. This is Mayfield stats with you know, some more time to play in this game versus the other guys through 12 games. Yeah, and, and not only that, Chris, I think when you look at each of these individuals, they, they all brought a little bit something different to the table beyond the numbers. And I think with Baker Mayfield, he brings that. And you've seen it tonight again. <laughs> We've talked all night, it seems like the last few weeks about it, but the team feeds off of his energy. They believe in him. Walsh, incomplete pass. And sometimes when you're talking about a Heisman Trophy, for me personally, when I vote, I I'm looking for those kind of things. I'm looking for the leadership. I'm looking for the intangibles. I'm, I'm looking for a guy that just has a way of his team looking to him, say, okay, go make a play. We believe in you. And Baker Mayfield's been doing that. It started for me when I saw him play against Tennessee in a hostile environment against the Volunteers, and they had a hole. They were able to dig out of it, come back, and win that game in overtime. That's when I started to really say, boy, this number six got a little bit of a different feel to him at quarterback for the Sooners. Had a couple picks in that game in Knoxville as they climbed out of a 17-0 hole. Walsh picks his way through heavy traffic and is knocked down. It'll be third down, and that's when Bob Stoops really felt like he realized, and maybe the team realized, they had something special to quarterback yes. for this guy. Yeah, and I, and I think the combination of Lincoln Riley coming in as the offensive coordinator, I think there was a new found confidence for Bob Stoops. Lincoln Riley, there he is right there, coming over from East Carolina. 
combination of Lincoln Riley calling the plays. Baker Mayfield had to sit out last year after transferring from Texas Tech. We knew about P. Ryan and Mixon in the backfield. It's just a, it's a, a perfect mix right now with what they're doing for this offense. Walsh needs three on third down and delivers a long throw. And the catch is made there by Marcel Aitman, who hasn't really been active tonight. He's a speedy wide receiver, but he's been contained by the Sooner secondary. Yeah, he, he is a big body at 6'4", 210 pounds. One of the more physical blockers you'll see. And I don't know if that football touched the surface or not. It doesn't look like they're going to stop. Oh, looks like they are. The previous play is under further review. Richard Jordan is the replay official. That ball through his arms did appear to touch the ground. Let's see if it aided in his control of the reception. Tough, tough look right there. Let's bring in Dave Kataya. The point of the ball did seem to touch the ground. Dave, what, what's your take on this? It's a tough look, but it does look like the point of that ball touches the ground and it does move. But again, I don't know that if that look is definitive enough for them to change this upstairs. Maybe we'll get a, get a better look here. We'll zoom it in, Dave. This is the best look at it. But lost the, the part of the ball right there. You can see the point of the ball appear to move, but again, I'm not sure that's going to be enough for them to change it. It, it may be. It's a big review for the Cowboys' faint hopes here. It'll be fourth and five if it is overturned as opposed to a first down of their 46. You know, Dave, for me, when, when I, let's take another look at it. I, I'm with you guys, you can see the ball, you can see it touch, but what do you look, what do you think they're looking at next door here, Dave? What, what are they trying to judge on these replays? N none, of, none of these replays yet make me feel like, okay, I can definitely, without a question of a doubt, I can make the call here on what happened. I agree with you. I don't see anything that's 100 percent here. It doesn't matter that the ball touches the ground. What's key is when it touches the ground, does the ball move or as, as Chris said, did it aid? After further review, the ruling on the field of a completed catch stands as called. It, they, for fans, that's, I think, confusing. The ball can touch the surface. The ball can touch the surface, but it can't move. If that ball touches the surface, you see surface and you see any movement or that ground, as Chris said, aids in catching the ball, it's going to be incomplete. But simply the ball touching the ground with no movement can, is still a completion. See, again, I think people automatically see the ball touch the ground and they just think it's incomplete. That's not always the case. You're 100% right. I don't think anybody knows what a catch is in any level of football, what we've seen in college and the NFL this year. <laughs> so it is a first down. Now they flip it on the end around here to McCleskey, but he's got nowhere to go. And of course, it's Mr. Stryker. What did he get a hold of there? The side of the helmet? I mean, he's right in front of the referee. I can't imagine he grabbed the face mask. He got a hold of something to help bring him down. Yeah, his fingers appeared to grab the side of the helmet. He was called earlier for that face mask. Take your pick. Did he grab the, the horse collar and the face mask? Dave, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd booing because it wasn't flagged right up there in plain view. But another big play made by Stryker. Even if he didn't get away with it. Walsh checks it down and flips it to Carson out of the backfield and he's knocked down. Dave, what, what, what's the call there? Because that, I mean, we all think that's a face mask. Any part of the helmet opening, including the ear hole, the side, the face mask, if that's grabbed and twisted, it's it's a foul. Now, did he grab the ear hole, possibly? Let's take a look at it right here. Might have a good shot. It looks like he grabs the top of the face mask, which is a foul. Okay? It doesn't have to be the face mask. Any helmet open, including the top of the face mask. Thank you. He had the shield on there, so perhaps the top of the shield counts. <laughs> Third and eight. Walsh. For Washington and Sanchez in a jump ball. Washington wins that battle again. And the pokes are down inside the 25. Yeah, he said it's a tough night for Zach. Zach. Yep, Zach Sanchez has had a rough night, and almost all the all the throws have been where the ball's underthrown, and he doesn't come back to the ball. 
almost out. And I don't know at this point if J.W. Walsh is intentionally doing this, but he has underthrown the deep ball, and Sanchez has struggled to adjust back to the ball. And again, Washington makes a catch on him. Sanchez is a much better corner than he's showing in this game. And you know he's not going to feel great about his night, even if the Sooners Time win. Timeout, Oklahoma. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Footing part of the problem for Sanchez as well on that play. But you can see Stoops even up 28 here, late third quarter, still still coaching with intensity and, and bothered that his defense has given up that kind of downfield throw. Yeah, I mean, Zach Sanchez is one of the better corners that you'll see in the Big 12. And you know, I, I think that's the toughest ball when you're left alone out there to play man-to-man in college football anyway, when the ball is up in the air and it's underthrown and the receiver is tracking the ball the entire time. It's easy for him to locate the ball and go back and get it. It's very, very challenging for the corner to be able to see the ball because you're thinking the ball is going downfield. So you put your foot down and now you lose your footing and you're on your back. So it, it's a tough ask for Zach Sanchez or any corner for that matter. But I, I'm, I'm very surprised because again, he's their better cover guy compared to Thomas on the other side. I think Oklahoma State, they may have had a better chance to go the other route tonight, but instead they've been picking on Zach Sanchez. On first down, Wallace with the pump fake and wanted to look downfield. Didn't pull the trigger and now just throws it away. You look at this Oklahoma team and presuming that they hold on to this four touchdown lead here and, and do get in the bracket, how would you think opponents would look to attack him? Where, where's the weaknesses on this in the Sooner team right on this, now? On this defense? Anywhere. Uh, I don't think there's a weakness on the offense. I mean, that, 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 you, you're going to have your hands full unless you can beat them up at the offensive line. It's still an area, especially the tackles with two freshmen. You could you could wonder against a team like Alabama how that would match up. But I think defensively, you got to try to attack them through the air. And tr even though they're, they're athletic in the secondary, that's where you got to try to make plays on. Chris Carson tries to bounce it. And is knocked out. That's why I ask you, would, would you look at a play like that and think that you know, maybe we can, you know, win some jump balls, get some chunk plays yeah. in this team? I mean, I, I, it may have improved. You know, Chris, last year, they allowed about 276 yards a game through the air. And they were young in the back end. And even though Stryker and Tapper got some pressure, they gave up an inordinate amount of big plays. This year, only 190 yards a game through the air. So they've improved a lot. But if you're asking me, you know, where do you try to go after them? I, I think you, you definitely try to go through the air to try to make some big plays. Walsh in third and four, slings it out, and then flying up to make the play as Will Johnson as he drops Carson for a loss. It'll be fourth down. On the way, 17th against the pass last year. It improved up to 30. They've held all these high power passing offenses well under their average. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. That's a great job there by Will Johnson, the nickelback getting around the block by by Glidden. And when you're asking these things, I, I mean, Oklahoma's won national championship with Bob Stoops. They've been to the national championship, another one with, with Bob. And he feels this defense might be one of the better ones that he's coached. So we're kind of trying to figure out. Sure. You know, right, there aren't a lot of weaknesses yeah. on this OU team, is my point. Fourth and eight. Pressure. Walsh delivers. Strike. Oh, just deflected. Having a chance to make a play was Austin Hayes. And giving the folks a little hope there, but turn it over in the final minute of the quarter. Boy, did he, did Thomas get a hand on that football? Or did Hayes just drop it? I think Hayes may have just dropped that. I think, I think Thomas waved his arm, but you're right. That went through to the yeah, receiver. Right through his hands. And, and, and see, there's a matchup that you find. You get it, get it your third or fourth receiver against a safety and one-on-one -on -one coverage, and you hope that he can beat it. There's nobody back behind to help. It's just one-on-one -on -one living on an island. And that time, Hayes made a, a, good, a great move to get open and away from Thomas. Ball was perfectly thrown by Walsh. Just unable to execute, get the points on the board, which they needed desperately. Yeah, would have cut it to a three-touchdown margin. Instead, they they fail. As you see Pirine back in there, they failed to convert on fourth down for the first time this season. That was terrific news. Pirine. Moving a little gingerly, maybe hit after he lost a couple yards. He must be feeling fine to go yeah. back in there with yeah. the game four touchdown margin. Yeah, he's got blood on the right thigh. He's got an ankle that's taped up. Kind of fits his personality. He had the same deal last week where he had an ankle and went out. Looked like he might be done for the night. And ended up coming back. 
tough guy, durable guy. So the Cowboys got a field goal early in the third quarter, but then Oklahoma responded with a touchdown. 15 minutes to play in Bedlam. Sooners up by four scores. And just being that guy, being the point guard of this offense and providing that leadership and tangibles just always, always out there for Baker Mayfield and this team. Passer, blocker, runner, leader. All of it tonight. Now Mayfield to Shepard again and his favorite target makes the catch at the 35 first down. Ninth for Shepard tonight. He makes his case for all American teams. Tough to even be all conference at that position. You're right. In the, in the Big 12. Yeah, you look around this conference, you're right. You know, Corey Coleman, Coleman Dotson, Dotson, of course, he got hurt at the end of the year for TCU. And, and Shepard, you believe, is as good as anybody. I, 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 if I were having a draft right now and I had to pick a receiver, I'm Sterling Shepard's the first receiver I would take. He's such a premium on the guys who can get super vertical all the time. He maybe isn't at the top of that list. As Piran yeah. continues to come back in and, and power you know, through some some leg pain. You know who he is? He's Heinz Ward. You know, he, he's a guy that can do everything. He, he can get downfield. He can get vertical if he has to. What I love is when he doesn't make a catch, he's blocking. You know, he, he'll, he'll, he'll do a crack block and blow up a 245-pound linebacker. He's just an unselfish guy. He'll be a great teammate. Uh, he's just a guy that, uh, and he does everything. Recognizes man, recognizes zone cover two cover one man whatever you're playing he sees it because of the experience that he has and he just got he just really has a knack for making plays Sooners using the play clock snap it with one and it's Pirine again of course Shepard grew up around this program his dad was a Sooner player and they one of the favorites of this position Late Derek Shepard, part of that championship team in 85. And Sterling was was recruited by Bob Soup, not because his dad played, but because he believed in this guy. And Brian Bosworth presented with him a, a gift last week on senior day. What a journey. He said he, he felt the presence of his dad that night in Norman. And gone out and had another productive game. We said it earlier, but the last five weeks now in FBS. Nobody's been more productive at the position than Shepard. There's a whistle before this third and three play. Delay a game. I'm going to come in and talk about it. Delay a game off a of timeout. <laughs> Prior to the foul for delay a game, Oklahoma has called timeout. It'll be a 30, it'll be a full timeout. You really want to work the clock, but let's, let's keep things going. Take a break here. Frozen mist here in Stillwater. I wonder what the weather's going to be off the lake there in Cleveland when the Ravens and the Browns collide Monday night on ESPN. Countdown at 6. Served by Applebee's. And then the game at 8.15. Kind of night for Cowboys fans who arrived here with high hopes. And Baylor goes down to TCU last night and they got excited because the conference title was there for the taking tonight, but it's been Oklahoma that has emphatically grabbed control. Third down and a lot of time to discuss this play, and they decided to give it to Mayfield on the keeper and why not? Gets midfield and just slides down in this. Now, wet rug, and then move the sticks. Yeah, there, there's the read again, and Miley, 56, has no chance of being able to get out there. And that's who Baker Mayfield is reading, does a good job, stays in bounds, picks up the first down, keeps the clock moving. Flowers comes around the corner to block somebody. There wasn't any, almost nobody to block. Now, they all collapse down on the zone read. Now, Oklahoma starts to work this clock. Forget about the tempo and protecting a, a four touchdown lead. Mayfield up under center just for the sake of variety. Handles <laughs> to Piran and he'll actually lose a yard. I'll be honest, I'm really surprised. I mean, I, I, 
you got to love his competitive spirit. I'm very surprised that Samadji Piran is out there. Now, it's, remember, there, there, there's not a Big 12 championship game that they need to... Now, this was it. You know, this <laughs> is it. I mean, this is it. So you can you can understand it. I and mean, He knows his own body better than anybody. But I'm just... Four touchdown lead. You're looking at probably a top four bid, more than likely. Uh, you know, he's got some time to get rested up. But, and respect the fact that he wants to be on this field to secure a Big 12 championship, too. He's got 131, so he's over 3,000 career yards combined in his first two seasons. Shepard, the catch made, and a stiff arm, has to break free. Russell down at the 46. It'll be third down. Well, after the ball game, except on the West Coast, late local news, most of these ABC stations, ESPN and have Sports Center. For another busy day in college football. Plenty of discussion as we move within one week of the playoff selection committee's final verdict. The bracket of four teams to play in the semifinals New Year's Eve in Miami and Arlington. The Sooners have so far, with 11 minutes to play, made a very strong statement about their worthiness, no doubt about that. Snap it at one, and Mayfield flips it, and Shepard. Drop that one. So he's had a couple drops tonight to go with his 10 catches, and the Sooners will punt. Mayfield 17 of 25, and I think of those eight, eight incompletions, about five have been drops. Yeah, a couple by Shepard. Couple by Neal. Cyber. Boots it down there and everything working for Oklahoma tonight. Oh, wow. They just hit it the two and stopped. Wow. Complete team. Yep. Offense, defense, special teams. Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. Brought to you by Pacific Life. For life insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper and college football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. And Jiffy Lou. Experts around every corner to help you leave worry behind. All the emotion of senior night for J.W. Walsh. Seems like a long time ago. And a 10-7 lead with the Cowboys, and Oklahoma went on a tear. They have continued to exert dominance here after halftime. Stretching the lead to 28. Cowboys pinned back at their three. Walsh on a little crease. And he's knocked down by Jordan Evans and Alexander. You know, the defensive line from Oklahoma with Tapper and Matt Diamond, Eric Stryker we know about. We've seen Devontae Bond tonight, tonight as well. DJ Ward's had opportunities. Charles Walker. Very, very talented group. Good mixture of size and athletic ability and experience. Very, very tough up front. There's a second down run. Walsh again gets away. And through a tackle there, first down of the 23. Parker eventually stopped him. JW is still out there playing hard. He's going to be a coach like his dad and by showing loyalty never considering transferring even though Rudolph had beaten him out he'll always be popular around here and I think Gundy feels will one day be a terrific coach whether it's at the high school level or college it'd be interesting to see which choice he makes because of his dad and his background and talking to the coaches this week they, they think it would surprise them to see him want to coach in college and with his legacy and what he's done here in these last four years he'll be a great addition drop down. You know, like Gundy, who played his four years here, then went you know, right into coaching at a very young age, and play caller at a very young age, much like Lincoln Riley is on the other side tonight. And Gundy already a dozen years on the job. He can't believe how fast the time's gone. 48 years old now. And you, you and I were talking to him this week, and I said, you know, I don't know, this year's a little bit of a surprise for them to get to 10 wins. But he's done a really good job of maintaining consistency at this, at this, this school and what he's been able to achieve. No doubt. 
Walsh downfield has a man, hangs it up, and Washington couldn't collect it. That ball hung up a little bit too long as soon as recovered. But Washington's come back and made a lot of catches against Sanchez. This time, he goes by him a little double move. Boy, Zach Sanchez, he's not going to like the film when he pulls this one out. And he's lucky because the, the ball hung up in the air and it allowed the, the safety Parker to come over and help out. But if, if J.W. Walsh threw this ball on time and didn't put so much air under it, that little double move there by James Washington, left 15 once again, standing there, lost in coverage. He's had a rough night tonight. Coach, 6 of 15 in third down. Walsh needs 10. Pump fakes. And now fires and it's broken up. Again, closing with Stephen Parker that time. That's a good series for the safety and it's fourth down. I think Parker has the skill set of a corner, but he plays safety. 6'1", 200 pounds out of Tulsa. And I think his emergence this year, along with Will Johnson, they, these are the guys that when you get against these Big 12 offenses, you know about the corners in Thomas and Sanchez. But in the inside, when you have Steven Parker that can make plays and has ball skills, that's a real asset to this defense. Zach Siner has been way too busy tonight for the Cowboys' hopes to win this game. Shepard backpedals at the 36. 8.26 to go for the Sooners. Checking out the LG V10 moments of the week. We'll begin last night, that sloppy wild game in Fort Worth. TCU outlasting Baylor in overtime. Devon Boykin coming back, throwing a touchdown pass. Clemson got past South Carolina, not quite as close as the five-point margin. So next stop, the Tar Heels in Charlotte. We'll have that one for you. How about Big Battle in the Iron Bowl? And Big Derrick Henry running the football. Auburn hung around. Yeah. And what this, game this was? was probably the game of the day. Stanford and Notre Dame back and forth, back and forth. And number six and number seven go down with Baylor and Notre Dame losing. Buckeyes big win over Michigan not included there, but it could be a, a really important day for Ohio State coming off the home loss to Michigan State as Mixon cuts it back because with Notre Dame dropping out, yes. Ohio State lurking around, yeah. but they were eighth there, so just really need another upset or two to put themselves back perhaps into contention. Yeah, I mean, it, it puts them and you would think Stanford as the two teams kind of waiting to see if there'll be an upset in that final weekend, whether it's North Carolina and Clemson or it's Alabama and Florida, which doesn't seem very likely. Is there a scenario, Kirk, where you don't see one of the Big Ten teams, whether it's Iowa or Michigan State, no. the winner in Indy not being no. right there? No, I think, so you think they got a slot. Oklahoma has secured their spot tonight. I think uh, you have the winner of the Big Ten championship game and of course Clemson and Alabama if they win their championship games. The thing is if you have somebody stumble, one of those four, well Oklahoma's done, but if one of the others were to stumble, it, 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 the two teams just based on all these losses that are piling up in the top ten, the two teams that are going to be in the discussion will end up being Ohio State and Stanford. Now remember Stanford still has to play USC right. in a Pac-12 championship game. And if they, if they were to lose that, I think the only team left might be Old Urban Meyer and Ohio State hanging around out there. Free play, Cowboys jumped offside, and Westbrook just over his fingertips, but Mayfield knew he had a shot downfield. The penalty is going to be against the Cowboys and should give Oklahoma a first down here. Baker was disappointed. He wanted that deep shot there. Offside, defense number 94. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Jordan Welford jumped off this was the de facto conference championship game in the big 12 where they play nine games through round robin you and i will be in charlotte for yep. in north carolina with our crew can't wait for that it's a it's a sellout it's a, oh, it's gonna be fun tar heels just the one loss say they are completely overlooked and they feel disrespected but he really lost to South Carolina, the, the other two soft non-conference games, eroding some of their credibility, but it's been a terrific year for the Tar Heels as Mixon makes a cut, shakes free, and Bulldogs is down to the 41. Clemson's been number one in all 
four editions and but you figure guys stay there you think they'll still be number yeah, one I think they will I think you'll have Clemson Alabama Oklahoma and Iowa I think it's going to hold a hold serve here going into that final weekend Michigan State sitting right there at five chance to play number four winner of that game you would think will be right right where they want to be in the top four This is Mixon again. And down at the 35. Bob Stoops still electing to keep his starters in. Again, not having one graphic we didn't have, or one part of the graphic we didn't have, as we, you talked about. No, no longer having the Big 12 championship game, so there's nothing to worry about. They're playing for the Big 12 championship right now, and these players don't want to come out of the lineup. They want to keep playing. Bob's got his assignment. He and Mike Gundy and their staffs, of course, will head out and begin recruiting tomorrow. It's about a nine-day recruiting period that you get the benefit of using if you don't play in the final weekend, and they will hit the trail hard looking for the next crop of prospects. This is Mixon, bulldozing straight ahead. Pacific Life game summary looking at what was the decisive quarter in this game the 30 point quarter for the Sooners which included the, the pick six from Jordan Thomas and some fireworks from the running game P Ryan and mixing them with long touchdown runs in the first half Stoops and Kirk Ferentz interestingly of Iowa each in their 17th year and with Frank Beamer retiring after this season his Hokies did win at Virginia to secure a bowl but a terrific moment as Beamer he, he did he dabbed a little bit he get with Milan he and celebrated was carried off the field his 29th year when he does retire Ferentz and Stoops are next tenure at one school with 17 years and perhaps both headed for the playoff if Iowa can knock off the yeah. Spartans next week well, that's, I wondered about that with uh, Frank Beamer stepping down Boy, it's amazing. Bob Stoops, 17, 17 years. 178, closing in on 179, Oklahoma. For Baker Mayfield, he was a finalist for the Davy O'Brien Award, which will be awarded at the People Award Show in Atlanta this year for the first time as Mixon bounces it. It's a first down driven out inside the 15. Well, Tuesday night over on ESPN, a college hoops doubleheader, the annual Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by the United States Marine Corps, 7.30 Eastern, Cavaliers and the Buckeyes. And at 9.30, Maryland plays North Carolina, used to be ACC rivals, of course, now part of the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Also streaming live with the Watch ESPN app. See the boys across the way still beating on the wall down there with the paddles. They're mm. still, they're still working. I don't think you're allowed to leave. If you're one of the paddle people there, yeah, I think you're required to, still, to stay. They're still banging away down there. I don't think the Sooners are phased. Mixon, <laughs> breaking free. Sometimes visitors will tell you that, that that noise, which is loud down there when yeah. they get going, perhaps they're not as peppy as they they have been at, at times well, in the past. When you're up 28 with under four minutes to go, it's kind of a well, we got a job to do here. We're gonna, we're gonna keep bouncing. We're gonna keep banging on this wall here. It feels like more chore than anything else, isn't it? <laughs> that middle there is still here. No, I love a break it. From street. <laughs> I appreciate it. We need the cannon guy here. You come on. This group with the cannon guy. I mean, this guy out oh, here he broke it. The dude on the right broke his, his paddle. Now he was no shirt. Banging on the wall in a 28 point game. You criticize him. Mixon. No, I love it. <laughs> Inside the I applaud it. It's incredible. <laughs> it is incredible. It's a good word for it. Is that an assignment or do they just do that on their own? It's part of the club. There's a president of the club. It began in the 90s of his fraternity members yeah, that yeah, did that. I, I don't know if I thought. But none of them have left. Is that a, what is that, a reindeer? On, what is that, what's going on there? I don't know. <laughs>
third and a yard. They milked the play clock again. And it's Mixon. Bouncing it. Flag is down. He's knocked out. He ruled a touchdown. We'll check the marker. I think it's offsides by Oklahoma State. It's right in front of the Oklahoma band. They're getting a lot of the Sooners. You know, P. Ryan gets so much attention that, that Joe Mixon a lot of times gets forgotten. Offside. Defense but I, number I really one. love that penalty has declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Chris, in these last six or seven weeks since that Texas loss, you, you watch Mixon along with P. Ryan in the backfield together. Just make sure he hit the ball got into the end zone. Looks like it did from that angle. How about the night of these two guys, Kirk? Mixon with 136 and two. P. Ryan 131 and two. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he is just a really nice compliment. And what they've done with their scheme and how they attack now, they kind of mirror each other in the backfield. You, you really can't get any kind of hint at all what might be coming next. Cassidy along with a Ford wrap up show after the game, as you see. Really satisfied hugs from Lincoln Riley. He's the new component for this Oklahoma team. The play caller who came over from East Carolina, just 32 years old, and for the Sooners, this is a, a sweet celebration. Their their regular season is done. They feel they're headed for the bracket, Kirk, and it's a team that had to climb out of a hole at Tennessee. Strikers bar when yeah. <laughs> Trooper slid to look. You, you know what's cool about that? The, the hugging down there is Lincoln Riley's not just hugging the offensive guys, he's hugging the defensive guys. This this is a very hungry football team. There's offense hugging defense there with Stryker and Mayfield. Yeah, it, it might seem like something. Of course they're hugging each other. You don't always see that. A lot of times you'll see the offense on one end of the field hugging each other, the defense on the other. This is a real team. And I think the eight and five year a year ago really made them appreciate winning that much more. Carr is knocked down. It's a group that it was splintered. that came apart in that five loss season, but they came together after the embarrassment in the bowl that you talked about earlier, galvanized in the spring, and then after the loss of Texas, which was mysterious. They, they, they just were I think they learned a flat yeah. performance script, but look at, the, look at the scores, look at the huge production offensively since that one loss. And they paid back the Cowboys for, for an upset loss in Norman last year in a big way. And they are continuing to enjoy it, dancing around on that sideline. They're going crazy over there right now. Crit, this the, is the, back. The, 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 lo the loss at Texas taught them about appreciating playing with an edge, playing with a focus that they didn't have that day. They have not looked back since that game either. They're going to go now to 13 and one in these Bedlam games when it's a top 25 matchup. They've been knocked off in surprise over the years, but when when both teams have showed up with some hype, it's been the Sooners who have dominated the Cowboys down through the decades. Uh oh, we got we got, we got some organization going on right now with the Gatorade. Well, uh, we got a minute 36 to go. Yeah, I don't know if it's time for that about, yet. I don't know about that. Well, Bob's uh -oh, uh -oh, the uh -oh. There's his brother Ron. Ronnie made it in. Yeah, Ron, who Ron works, made for, it out of Youngstown. Uh, works for uh, Bo Pelini at Youngstown State. And Taylor breaks free and fights hard out near midfield. And Bob took the headphones off. Either way, no. Uh oh. You got Sterling Shepard there. You got Zach Sanchez, Dominic Alexander. Here they come. Look out. Hit on a swivel. Hey, they got him. <laughs> Only 25 degrees out. That's got to be a great feeling for Bob's too. So, you know, 17 years is a long time in one school in the modern climate of this sport. We've already had a championship. I said lost another championship game to Urban Meyer and the Gators. He came back and he got re-energized. Yeah. Feels better physically than he did a year ago. No doubt about it. Wait, wait you tell the coach around that he, did he elude this? Woo! Oh! Come on, Mayfield and Trevor Knight, the two quarterbacks couldn't get their OC. Incompletion. <laughs> <laughs> Look 
Well, that one's got to play along here. Cowboy down in the field. And Mike Stoops has come down out of the press box with a carry on luggage slung over the shoulder there. Getting set for the charter home. All smiles for Oklahoma. A 25 point victory over their rivals from Stillwater. And 11 and 1 season. Feeling very, very good as they hit the recruiting trail tomorrow about their playoff chances coming in at number three, even before this high quality road win. ATT strong performance looking at the backfield of Oklahoma tonight. Pretty good evening for P. Ryan. Had the big run that really got him going, averaging almost eight yards a carry. Joe Mixon, with P. Ryan having an ankle injury, got more and more of an opportunity in the second half, almost 10 yards a carry. And a couple touchdowns himself and a big solid night again for Baker Mayfield. Chris Carson, the junior running back for Oklahoma State, is the player who is being helped off to the sidelines. <laughs> Oklahoma State, you know, you look at the stats, Kirk, in, in 450 yards. They, they weren't terribly outgained, had six yards of play here. And, and J.W. Walsh on senior night with Rudolph unable to contribute much. His stats will look real good, but here's Oklahoma putting this thing away in the second quarter, really. Yes. Randy Childs cuts it back. And the Sooners, first contender for this playoff to have their business concluded. Make this a bedlam beatdown to claim the Big 12 championship, their first since 2012. 5-0 this year against teams ranked in the AP Top 25. A sweet one for all the veterans and the veteran coach. Shepard, a backflip to punctuate a night that included 10 receptions. Oh, my God. And a touchdown, be careful. Let's get into Tom Rinaldi with a satisfied Coach Stoops. Chris, thanks very much. An absolutely thorough victory in every phase of the game, Bob. What message do you think this sends to the committee? Well, hopefully we were already in a, po a positive position in the, what, in the top three, and we can only move up, I would guess, and uh, really proud of our players and assistant coaches really did a great job. Eight and five a season ago to where you are right now, Bob. What was the key to this turnaround and this team coming together the way it happened? Yeah, you know, they've worked really hard. They've, uh, we've really pushed ourselves in practice. It's been a fun group, really. They've got a great personality to them and, and uh, great willingness to listen. So it's been a great group, fun group to coach. Baker Mayfield, a great performance. What pleased you most, the block he threw or everything else he did? You know, that guy is special. He just does so many. He, he's just so entertaining to watch, and, and there's no holding him back, you know, so uh, he had another incredible night out here. Enjoy this one, Bob. All right, Tom, thank you. Let's go to Heather with Baker. All right, Tom, thanks so much, Baker Mayfield. Congratulations. Big 12 champions for the first time since 2012. Now, your coach, Bob Suits, has talked all season about the singular focus being the motto. <laughs> How did you guys keep that focus and keep your mind on the task at hand tonight? It's been tough, but I mean, it's been a week to week thing. And our, and our seniors and our captains have done a great job of keeping everybody else focused and, and focused on our goal, which was first the Big 12. And, and we're, we accomplished that right there. You have been on quite a journey. What makes this team, this run, everything that you've done this season just so special? We're really close. A lot of people don't know that, but uh, we're a really close team. And you don't see that a lot just because it's a college program and people come from every background. But we're really close, and it's, it's fun when it's special like that. And, Baker, it seems like everything's falling into place. You check off another goal tonight, but your season is finished for now. You have one more week to wait and watch the other teams make a statement. What is your statement to the committee for that December 6th ranking? Uh, we, we already had a nice little ranking in the playoff spot, but I think we just made a statement, so I don't see how they could leave us out. And you guys always talk about being so team oriented and how important this team and the chemistry is. But there's also a certain individual award that's floating out there. It's called the Heisman. You've talked about how important it would be to or how special it would be to get to go to New York. What would that mean to you? Uh, that's like a dream come true. That's something you watch as a kid. You grow up and you see you see that award show uh, every year and you watch that. But I mean, I'm only going as far as the team goes. So I mean, hats off to all my teammates and the coaching staff for getting us ready and winning. 
Well, congratulations on another gutsy performance. Speaking of the team, Tom Rinaldi's over there with Mr. Shepard. Heather, thanks a lot. Sterling, how special is this? So special. I was telling the guys before the game, uh, I came in as a freshman and I won one and haven't had the feeling since, <laughs> and I'd love to have it again, and boy, it feels good. Your dad played here. He played in these games. He went on to win a national championship. How special is this moment, given your family's legacy and part of the Sooner family? Yeah, I mean, I, throughout my whole career, all I try to do is just keep the legacy going, and uh, I think I've done a pretty good job of it so far. What lies ahead now? Hey, we got to get prepared. We got some tough teams uh, that, that are coming talk. up, and we got to finish this thing out strong. Quickly, I saw you fly down the field after your quarterback threw that block in the first half <laughs> what made, what pleased you about that play what can you say about him as a leader man my boy's a competitor uh and he's not scared of anything i mean I've, i know you guys heard him say that before but he's not scared of anything he'll go throw blocks run people over it doesn't matter he's he's ruthless well done sir thank you chris tom thank you mayfield rocking that ultra flat brim as he is a word for some of the sooner fans Mixed feelings for his girlfriend, the former Oklahoma State soccer player tonight. Is Bailey happy for her guy, but not happy for Walsh and the Cowboys, who came up well short. Emmanuel Ogba, the junior, kissing goodbye. Almost certainly his last game here as he heads off to the NFL. P. Ryan, who got a scare with that ankle injury, but came back to finish the game as well as Mixon. And, you know, listen, there, there's no shortage of high-quality talent on Oklahoma's team, but... Mayfield and Shepard Kirk both reiterated what we've heard from all of these leaders. You can include Eric Stryker in that. Yeah, there's talent, but you need more. And this team has that something more, that that togetherness, that chemistry that the championship team search for and don't always find. They're hungry. They're a hungry football team after everything that they've been through. There have been people that have mocked Bob Stoops in the last few years. They've mocked these players. They've talked about Oklahoma as kind of a program of the past. They've, they've felt that. There are a lot of guys that are seniors on this team that I think drive the bus. I, I, I just, I don't know if I've seen another team in the country that has the love for one another the way this Oklahoma team does. Uh, it's one thing to look at the stats and be impressed with the quarterback and the running backs and the receivers and the defense. But I love to watch this team care and cheer for one another. We saw Ohio State make a heck of a run last year when they didn't care about who was getting the attention. They just cheered for one another and genuinely loved one another. This Oklahoma team, championship teams, have that kind of feel. That's what I sense when I've been around this Sooners team. The committee had Oklahoma State at number 11. So Oklahoma comes in here, wins by 25 points. Bob Stoops didn't campaign at the end because he didn't felt he needed to. Oklahoma makes their statement and again has their regular season complete. So they will be able to sit back and watch Clemson, Alabama, and that Big Ten championship game, which figures to feed in one of the teams into the 14 bracket, knowing they've got a place. And if they don't move up to number one, two and three will collide in one semifinal. And unless Alabama stumbles or Clemson stumbles and moves down, potentially an Oklahoma-Alabama semifinal rematch of that Sugar Bowl when the Sooners got the tide and there were some plaints that maybe Alabama wouldn't try that hard, didn't mean a lot to them. <laughs> yeah. It would add spice. Up. Yeah, it would add spice. They'd be fired up. And let's make it very clear. Oklahoma will advance. They're going to be in the four, whether they're going to be two or three or one or whatever they're going to be. You just know as a Sooners fan tonight, that you're going to be in the postseason in the top four. So much for that that myth last year about the Big 12 needs a conference championship game to be able to advance into the top four. This year we see Oklahoma without a, a championship game being able to be crowned the champion of the Big 12. They will in fact be in the top four and we'll find out, as you said, what Clemson does, what Alabama does, and what happens in Indianapolis next week between Iowa and Michigan State. So the Sooners come up the road to Stillwater and make a strong closing statement to an 11-1 Big 12 championship season. We're off to the ACC championship game next Saturday night. See if Clemson can do their part against North Carolina. The Tar Heels also having a great year. A big salute to our crew, which once again here in Stillwater battled some tough weather conditions. The, the road warriors that we have, we appreciate what yeah. they do. All year long, you guys have meant so much to us uh, on air. So thank you very much for all your hard work. And of course, the talented crew in the truck, Bill Bennell, our producer, Derek Mobley, our director, and everybody who's helped us on Saturday Night Football. For Kirk, Heather, and Tom, Chris Fowler saying so long from Stillwater, the Ford wrap-up show coming up right now with Cassidy Hubbard.